is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. Good evening, welcome to the iRacing Esports Network. Welcome to Watkins Glen, the fantastic Watkins Glen. And my name is Chaz Draycott and I'm alongside Alex Simpson for this evening in the BSR MX5 Winter Series. It's the second week of the season. These guys had a fantastic show in last time rounds at Brands Hatch. And hopefully, Alex, we'll get more of the same tonight. This is a very uh, draft orientated track, so should be a lot of good racing here. Uh, yep, hello everyone. Indeed, good to be here, and yeah, absolutely, this is going to be a great race meeting. Of course, it is the uh, the long version of the circuit, so not so crazy as the uh, the cup layout that we've seen just uh, at the sort of tail end of the showdown last season. Um, but uh, yeah, this nonetheless is still going to make for some uh, phenomenal racing, some phenomenal pack racing as well. So watch the uh, watch the snake on the mini map just. Wing it's round way around this circuit. It's just gonna be uh it's just gonna be crazy, I think. I think actually we're gonna see some epic racing, some epic moves. Uh Watkins just makes just made for great racing. Can't express how much I like this circuit. I think maybe it was because it's one of my first wins um sort of out of rookies come at Watkins Glen and I racing about five years ago. So I'm like, yeah, I love this place. But it does uh, sort of stick with you, doesn't it? Yeah, but I still I still enjoy it to a date. Um, you know, whether it's been in sort of like the the skippies back then i think it was the indycar that actually won the the, the racing um but yeah like the you know even the world championship whenever it goes there it's yeah it's watkins week so yeah i'm sure the guys are stoked for it but perhaps not as much as me <laughs> <laughs> well i'm sure some of these guys are looking forward to it i did have a little hop around some of the uh the team radio channels earlier just wishing some of the guys luck having a bit of a chat they all seem to be in high spirits for it it's still quite early on in the season of course but they do come to a track like this and think it's a more level playing field than most others because of that slipstream that is oh so important. Qualifying is coming to an end right now. And it's a really, well, I mean, you look down this list of drivers, Alex, and every time we come to a race meeting with these MX-5 boys in BSR, it just gets more and more impressive. The teams that are entering and the drivers that come with it as well. It's a fantastic list. And, of course, as you can see there on the left at the moment, it's topped by uh, Mr. Ashley Sutton. Yeah, phenomenal. Um crew that we've got here and whopping great big numbers as well and uh well we I can't even scroll down far enough hold on let me expand my live timing screen so i can see the drivers on the bottom uh 47 out there uh pretty impressive stuff you know so it's good to see and actually i think uh we need to sort of give uh, a bit of recognition and a bit of credit and a bit of thanks to iRacing here as well for the iRacing esports network it definitely does seem to be bringing in new drivers there's definitely new names that i haven't seen that perhaps we might not have seen in the series about uh the little bit of extra exposure that the networks brought the series so yeah thanks very much uh i racing for that and yeah we look forward to seeing what these new guys can do yeah certainly it, uh, it has been a great tool for this championship to help build it up and of course the more drivers the more exciting racing and then the uh, the better broadcast for us and then it feeds back to it more people watch it and then they might get more interested so it's a nice little sort of circle of life within uh, sim racing that we get from doing this. And obviously Alex and I really enjoy doing this as well. It's an absolute pleasure to be here for you. We are also testing something out tonight as well. If you have a quick look at the timing tower on the left-hand side of the screen, you will notice that 18th overall, Mr. Taylor Lane, is actually down as position one. And you will notice that because of the little green strip next to his name, that means he is an AM driver. The two categories in this championship, Pro and AM. That just means that he is the top AM driver. And you can see there Nathan Davis is down in 18th. He's 19th overall, of course, but either way, just makes it a bit easier to sort of recognise the two classes and how people are doing. Taylor, uh, Taylor Lane is, of course, a, uh, a teammate of mine, actually, recently joining Beast Racing. Himself and Jordan Giddings will be uh, out there tonight representing the brand. Uh, James McRitchie, I believe, is, I think, second in the uh, standings at the moment. You can just see the little designation at the top of your screen there. 
But it's looking quite packed so far, Alex. In terms of uh, time between these guys, there's, well, looking down the list, there's barely anybody that's a tenth apart. This is really, really close. And, of course, that slipstream is going to make the actual race pace and everything even closer in itself. I wouldn't want to deny you the pleasure of reading through all of the grid at uh, breakneck speed. So, yeah, I uh, thought we'll, we'll, uh, we'll wait and show you the times and the gaps and the margins so you can get all that information in, of course. Uh, when we're about to call the grid in just a moment. We're just waiting for the final cars to finish their laps. But yeah, a lot of drivers out there. The times are very, very close. This is this is going to be a great, great race. And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch, and we hope that you all enjoy it as well on the iRacing Esports Network, of course. And I'm going to have to take a very big breath in a minute if I'm going to get through this grid before these lights go green. But we've done it before, so we can try and do it again. It might not be uh, quite what I managed at Monza, but we'll see how we get on. Nothing less will do. Yep, let's <laughs> see now then that they are as they are. So we'll go through this as quickly as we can then. Ash Sutton on pole, Brian Holmes second, Steve Hyford is third, Charlie Summers is fourth, Josh Thompson fifth, with Jason Cooper, Pete Newman, Jack McIntyre, Jamie Ayres, and Adam McNally rounding out your top 10. We'll fly through the rest really quickly. It's Jack Ashton, Michael Hall, Oscar Wilde, which is Kip Stevens, Cesare Rizzo, Ryan Walker, Dave Hampson, Nick McCarran, Taylor Lane, Nathan Davis, Peter Van Gulzi, top 20. James McRitchie, Stuart McFadden, Jordan Giddings, Luke Cooper, Law, Maury, Rob Graham, David Ayres, Mikhail Garcia, Carl Hardy, Max Wright, Mick Barry, Roy Viverke, Scott Malcolm, Billy Rose, Alex Journey, Jordan McGlone, Joe McDonald, Mikey Key, Tyler Luger, Vickery, Lee Barmer is 40th. And then it's Carl Jacolette, Lewis Morgan, Anthony Ainsworth, Ashley Bird, Craig Williams, Alan McCain, and your own Urson back off the grid. Job that didn't, didn't seem to take so long that time, but there we go. No, but, I did, yep. it with, did it with time to spare. <laughs> nice pack grid, though, as well. We've got Dave Cam in the chat saying McRitchie is his teammate in from uh, Asymmetric or Asymmetric with the word Sim in it. I like the name. And he's saying he hope he drives better than usual. So hopefully, Dave, he will provide some uh, some good entertainment for you tonight while also getting the results in. As we look at your pole sitter there, Mr. Ashley Sutton on pole with Brian Holmes as well. Fantastic to see Brian back out. He did suffer a, a very serious injury recently involving a sledgehammer and his knee. Yeah, where he yeah, tore all the ligaments in his leg, I believe, and he's somehow out racing tonight. He was messaging me earlier, explaining that uh, he was using, he was doing something to do with his knee in the clutch. So I'm not quite sure how he's managed that, but to get second on the grid in these boys, Alex, that's a hell of a feat when you've got an injury like that on your hands. Yeah, it, it, apparently he's having to auto blip and things like that, or auto clutches on. So yeah, he's, he's worried he's going to have no pace. There he is, second place on the grid. Yeah, Indeed. okay, okay. <laughs> Lights out, and they're away. Ash leads them down the straight then. Looks like they're not getting much pace, although he's actually had a really bad getaway there. He suddenly slowed up. Brian Holmes takes the lead. I don't think anyone was expecting that. He sure, he was, yeah. for a second. Yeah, he must have done, mustn't he? You can see him streaming round turn one then, using all of that runoff. There's lots of it at Watkins. Seems quite clean so far. You can see such a beautiful, brightly coloured field then, streaming towards you as they go up towards the S's. A lot of the usual teams involved at the top. We've got Swift Cooper Esports. We've got CQR, who are showing the uh, much stronger showing for this season this time round. They saw just how competitive this was getting, and they thought they wanted a piece of that. There's the snake flying down the straight. Then everyone slipstreaming at every single opportunity they can get. And they really are flying this time round. Look at the speed they're gaining down there. Even in these little MX5s, they don't hang about. And Ash Sutton, according to the timing tower, has gone to the top of the field. Yeah, round the outside of the uh, of the carousel, of course, he'll have the inside for the shoot. Oh, a little bit of contact as they uh, try and uh, get some room. But, uh, yeah, Brian in the exit uh, car there just runs actually a little bit wide to the shoot. Didn't quite catch the camber that you need on the inside there. And now he's under a little bit of pressure from Steve Hefford in the Simulapse car. Yeah, really, really feisty stuff from these guys. Oh, dear. Oh, there's contact with Hefford and he's clipped... I think that's Josh Thompson and one of the CQR boys is involved as well. Brian Hope is the wall on the outside. Real shame for Brian. That car not behaving itself, but that's given Ashley Sutton a really big gap at the front of the field. I'm sure he's going to be happy with that one. I have to say, I think that's probably a little bit on Brian. I think uh, Efford had uh, enough of the car ahead there that Brian perhaps didn't have, uh, didn't have the right to get his nose up the inside there. And yeah, unfortunately, a bit of carnage uh, ensued, but could have lost a lot more. I tell you what, in that crash, and I think we've been quite lucky, but yeah, one person who's not going to be happy certainly is Steve Hefford. Yeah, definitely, I agree with you there. But it is easy to lose quite a lot of cars in incidents here. We've seen it before, especially down that back straight. The walls aren't too far away from the edge of this circuit on all aspects, really. There is a bit of grass towards some of the uh, edges of the corners, but not always. You can see them filtering around the final corner there. You can see on the mini map 
There is the aforementioned snake that Alex was on about. There's a couple of cars seem to have stopped mm. there, been involved in an incident. Yeah, what is going on there? And that's, uh, that's nice. Tyler Lugo Vicar. He's never got any good luck, this boy. I say it every single week. He's just always in the wars. And Alan McCain there as well, having issues in the uh, Bushfink, uh, Team Bushfink Racing livery car. He's going to pull it right into the pits, and understandably, because there's no front end on that car at all. Looks like Tyler's managed to carry on. A real shame for Tyler, though. I was just speaking to him earlier. He said not to jinx him, so you can't pin that one on me. But Charlie Summers is up to second place in the Swift Cooper Esports car. He's gained two places so far, started fourth overall. Push from behind. Is that Thompson pushing him? I think it might be. It is, yes. It is indeed. In the uh, Thrustmaster Mivano Racing livery car. And Jamie Ez is in there as well in the SimLab car. Of course, that team used to be Momo. They are now actually sponsored by SimLab officially. Doing a fantastic job of securing that deal as well, but just let's not uh, try not to get mixed up between Thompson's car and Ayers' car. Both black with little red highlights on and big red logos on the bonnet, so it's not the uh, not the easiest of things to do. Getting yeah. involved here is Adam McNally. Two Smith Cooper Esports cars on Jason Cooper and Charlie Summers. In that corner there, Alex, they're just going around that right hander, just at the toe, what they call the toe of the boot section. As you can see on the map, it looks like a little boot to the right hand side. It's an absolute nightmare to get right and carry momentum around, and I imagine it's not the easiest thing to do in the MX-5. No, not at all, and you actually take a slightly odd line through there as well, because you want to use the new tarmac to get the, uh, just a, which has just a tiny bit of extra grip on it, so you want the left-hand wheels ideally on that new tarmac, the right-hand wheels on just on the inside of it to get the optimal line. But, uh, yeah, it does open up the opportunity for someone to stick one up the inside, which is kind of what we saw in the first lap. Um, but you never quite carry the speed out of the corner when you uh, when you just run a little bit tighter. So, yeah, uh, like I say, absolutely important to get it hang on, but very, very difficult to do. And it's a nice little sort of shout out to iRacing as well for the detail they go into where there is actually, I mean, from personal experience doing that corner, as we see Josh Thompson having a little bit of a blink there for a moment. He's back on track down the inside of Jamie Ayres. Nicely done into turn one. Jamie knows there's plenty of opportunity left in this Ooh, race. They're so wide. Yeah. That's definitely a, uh, an incident point for Josh. Just oh, in case didn't know. Oh, I thought he just got disqualified. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, just to get disqualified on lap three. That's impressive, but no. <laughs> you never know with Josh, though. He's always pushing the boundaries in our racing. Oh, actually, know, I think I've seen him being disqualified before lap three, to be honest. So <laughs> this, this is going to end in a disqualification. Oh, now he's on that? the grass. Well, they're three wide still. That's Summers in the middle of Ayres and Thompson. Jason Cooper one side on. <laughs> Summers has managed to get in front of Thompson. They're brilliant stuff. Two by two as they go around the carousel. Ayres has been hung out to dry here. He's going to be three wide now. McNally on the inside. Jason Cooper in the middle. They're not quite three wide. There was a bit of an overlap. Ayres down the inside of Thompson. This is Michael Hall getting involved now down the inside of McNally. Behind them is Jack Ashton in the 98 machine. Charlie Summers is wide. So is Beard. Sorry, not Beard. It's Ashton. I apologize. I just said his name as well. There they are, the two XI Energy Esports cars. Fantastic asymmetrical liveries on those machines. They look great. Oh, there's contact between Ayres and Thompson. Summers is involved. McNally's involved. And somehow, Alex, they're all still pointing the right way. It could have been yeah. a bigger incident once again, but they managed to uh, clean that up quite nicely. Bit of damage, I think. But, yeah, they all suck at that. It's just crazy little scene there. But, uh, yeah. Oh, someone blinking. That was, um, I think, possibly Rizzo. Yeah, Rizzo blinking. So. But yeah, they just they don't seem to want to uh, to try and battle uh, Sutton today, do they? I mean, he's just uh, out there on his own, and um, you know, ever since that little accident on, uh, on on that one, he's just gone well. Thanks, lads. If you want to carry on battling each other and let me uh, scamper away, well, you yeah, know, I'll do. I'll oblige. Yeah, it's a walk in the park for Ash tonight so far, but he was uh, having a chat with us earlier, and he is uh, he's streaming tonight as well from his own point of view. But look at this lot behind them. Just never give up, do they? None of them ever give up in this series, and that's what we love about it. There's such good racing all throughout, and as we could tell by uh, your reaction a second ago, as they came over the hill out of the toe of the boot, there's just cars everywhere. As Ashton goes about in, well, into a different postcode, or a zip code as it would be in the US, followed by Michael Hall. Michael Hall's had a great race so far, nine places gained. It's the same for Jack Ashton, actually, as well. I'm just going to have a quick look down the order, see who's the biggest mover. I think it's Craig Williams and Jerome Ursum. They've gained 16 places each. Fantastic drive by those boys. You can see now on board with Michael Hall in second place. And Ashton's 
just going backwards there because it's a dream. Thompson helping Michael Hall down the straight. He's dabbing the brakes not to turn him around. It's very easy to unsettle the rear end of this car. Ashton's still there. Thompson squeezing. There's contact. Oh, I don't know whether oh, Thompson saved that. Thompson. No, I think that's gonna got to have gone around for him. It is. It's in the wall. Well, he's, he's got it out of the wall at least. But yeah, that was a hell of a wobble he got on there. But I think he just squeezed him that bit too much. I don't think it was necessary to come that far down. I, I, th I think you're right. I think you know, um, got to give the driver on the inside a little bit of little bit of room. He was still there, and uh, you know, I think that's the real driver, the real life racer in uh, Josh. You know, it's yeah. like, well, I'm I'm in front and I'm squeezing you. You know, you know, if you, if we collide, it's gonna hurt. Yeah. You know? But it doesn't matter in the sim, does it? The driver on the inside will just go, send it. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, okay. you're, you're going to get flown to the outside. So yeah, I think uh, the better course for Jobs there just leave a, a, a couple of foot extra room and probably would have completed that move around the outside there. Yeah, there's a good bit of battle going on here as well, halfway down the field. Say halfway down the field, that's only in the top 10. Oh, the Swift Cooper Esports car was off in the background there. I think that might have been Mr. Cheney on the, uh, in the very, very background there, but Look at this battle now, McNally trying to get back through what was uh, a difficult first few laps for him. And just in front of him is McRitchie, who is leading the AM class at the moment. Taylor Lane is in the car behind him there, the beach race in MX5. And uh, Dave Cam in the chat is going to be very, very happy with that. McRitchie leading the way in the AM class. 11th overall as well, Alex, which is uh, really good progress for an AM, really. We usually see them around sort of beginning of the top 20 in the first race or so. Yeah, yeah, doing a great job. Um, I don't know who that is coming on. I don't know where is that? Uh, I think that was Mac McIntyre, was it? Uh, no, I think actually it might well have been M uh, McRitchie <laughs> going really, really wide and then coming back on. So, but yeah, great, um, great job. So right up there. I have to say, I am enjoying the um, the the whole. Yeah, let's see where the leaders are in in the AM class. Gives them a little bit more um, exposure. Yeah, definitely, definitely does. And it's not too confusing to look at it from our end anyway. We hope it's the same for you. You've just got a nice little view there of uh, something I was raving and raving about last week where in iRacing's most recent update, of course, they now get movable clouds within the skies and they do cast shadows on the track. So Ooh. one lap, you can come around. Oh, that's, a, that's Jack Ashton, 98 machine. He's somehow not hit anyone else. Not yet, anyway. But um, oh, no. that's, that's Davis. Davis. <laughs> Nathan Davis on his roof. Oh, oh no, he got, he got sent. <laughs> he got clipped by a result clothing car and he's up in the sky, back down on earth, and he's hopefully going to get that thing out of the way because I don't think it'll be wise to take that thing anywhere further. Oh, he's uh, put it in the wall himself. I've got to see that. I've got. He has as well. It must be. A, there must be a start bit to that. But oh wow. I think he might have tried to avoid Ashton. Jordan Giddings just getting lucky there. I think. I don't know whether he made contact. And I think it was. Uh, oh, Mikel Garcia got out of the way very abruptly there into the wall. Hopefully Nathan wasn't in VR for that. We've seen a couple of guys get launched around like that while they've been in VR and can't have any well. But it's a CQR 1-2 at the moment. And somehow Kip Stevens is into third place. <laughs> the uh, number 11 machine he's getting 10 places and he's sort of snuck up there so Cesare Rizzo actually done a great job of getting up there you can see the beautiful reflections on the top of the cars there as it goes slightly overcast the sun goes behind some of the clouds and in the pit lane there is the number 89 car that's Anthony Ainsworth as we go on board then Taylor Lane this is for the AM category lead James McRitchie in the number 22 car in front of him just see the understeer through turn one a lot of these guys have been mentioned in understeer since the most recent update that iRacing have done the uh, the car has apparently started to behave a bit differently and not be as lively as it used to be but I don't know about you Alex but I've seen some of these guys making it certainly look lively as they chuck it around yeah I certainly have look understeer it sounds like my car should get in it like a good bit of understeer do I <laughs> I don't have a choice I've got a Mark 5 Fiesta and uh, yeah doesn't do corners, but anyway, Taylor Lane's going to hope that McRitchie can't do corners now as they come to the carousel. He's got the slipstream. Stays on the outside to get there. Someone line much later on the brakes. It's Taylor Lane there. It's not going to work oh. for him around the carousel, but he's going to hopefully... Yeah, he's going to hope for a cutback there, but it's just not going to work, is it? He needs to be really careful, though, because he's got Mangle behind him. in the mirror, yeah, couldn't you? Just a little glimpse in the mirror. That's the thing around here. So many of these corners flow into the next one. You've got to be really careful. Say Van Gogh behind him, he's pretty much in him now. He's, uh, he's <laughs> getting ready for a fight. He's Peter Van Gogh in the Simlab car. I must say, I do really like out of all the Simlab cars. I think that's my favourite one with the uh, nice sort of blue highlights on it. Looks 
really smart. It's worth pointing out, even though they are, um, you know, in different class, they are fighting for the position as well. So the the AMs will want to defend from the pros and vice versa, because um, the points are based on the overall finishing position, not your finishing position in class. So that is for uh, yeah for extra points. So Lane will be offensive here while still trying to get up to McRitchie and get the overall class win, of course. Yeah, and while it is nice to get that class win, or say you finished on the podium in the class. Alex says these points are vital. Oh, the car off there. That's one of the. Oh, that is that. Oh, it's Anthony Ainsworth actually. He just joined Slept a moment down. ago. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He just joined a moment ago. We saw him coming out of the pits earlier, and he's managed to put it in the wall. Alex Cherney is there in the pits in a very damaged uh, Swift Keeper Esports car. It's still crabbing, and he's coming out of the pits. So I'm not quite sure what's going on with it. McIntyre there down the inside of Summers in turn, into turn one. Runs very very wide. Avoids getting an incident point on the grass, though. And just in case you don't know, if it's one of your first times uh, learning about iRacing or watching some of the racing, you do get incident points, which is based on a safety racing system to make sure everyone uh, races nice and cleanly and keeps it safe. You get one incident point if you go off track, usually anywhere up to two if you lose control of the car, and you can get up to four if you make contact with another car. Um, if you just, say, go on the grass like these guys would have been, and you will get one incident point there, as we see... That's Hampson in the middle of Hall and Rizzo into second place. Fantastic stuff by uh, Dave Hampson there. He's gained 14 places so far. We saw him making his, uh, his sort of uh, debut into the series a few weeks ago. And he's putting in a great drive here. Really making his mark in that very bold livery as well on the MX-5. But these guys, I think, Alex, are going to be fighting to the very end. One more lap to go after this one, surely. Yeah, that's it. just about going to squeeze through. Sutton certainly is, isn't he? Six seconds over. So, yeah, one more lap after this for them to battle it out for second place. But, yeah, they did a good job. You know, do remember the name. And, uh, yeah, it looks like he's going to be there for um, seeable future. Battling these guys at the front, having a look into the uh, into the hill. When we get the move done, of course, the, that inside becomes the outside as they come back onto the, uh, to the cup circuit. A lot of adverse camber around there as well, so very easy to run just a little bit wide or lose that back end with a bit of kind of like snap, snap oversteer. But uh, yeah, no such issue for the guys right now. We're clean line, so yeah, one lap to go for this uh, second place battle. And uh, just coming back to that corner as well, where you come back onto the cup circuit, it's a very difficult corner to get right if you're in something like a GTE car or a Formula One car, because it's a slight bump on the inside while you are on the new tarmac. As soon as you're getting on the throttle, there's a horrible little bump as it sort of levels out to join the cup circuit and it's easy to uh, spin up the rears. And I imagine you can probably do it in the MX-5 if you're pushing hard enough because it is a rear wheel oh, drive little beast. I bet you could, absolutely. Just get a little bit unstable and I bet it's, uh, it's a bit lively through that. So it can be. Michael Hall leads them up to uh, up the S's then. As there is your race leader, Ash Sutton, just away in the distance at the moment. He's just probably just loving life, singing to himself, you know, doing what he does. But um, Hampson then trying to get from behind Michael Hall, but Rizzo has already got there, and it looks like Cesare Rizzo is going to get the run. Ellis Stevens in there as well. Nearly four wide, you don't want to be doing that. We come into the carousel. Hampson not quite down the inside of Hall. Hall's gone a bit deep on the brakes. Let's hope he doesn't run wide into Rizzo. Ooh, there's contact. Oh, big slide. Somehow they both hold it. They nearly come back and make contact again as they go into the boot section now. Stevens down the inside of Hall, side by side. This is the third place now, the last podium spot. Stevens disappears for a moment. He's back. I thought he might have got disqualified if he made contact or something then. Taylor Lane, in the meantime, has taken the lead in the AM category further back. It's Rizzo hanging it around the outside. He's got a big slide on into there, and Hall has gained the position back. He's up into second. Watching all of this now with intent is going to be Dave Hampson. He wants to get this move done, but there's only a couple of corners left and not really anywhere to slipstream here, Alex. This isn't going to be the easiest thing for him to do, is it, as we go on board? No, he needs them to battle so that he can just get a run and surprise them. That's not going to help, though, every time that uh, Kip disappears. Of course, Kip showing as uh, Oscar Wilde on our, uh, on our own <laughs> lane. It's the trouble, you can put anything you want. <laughs> He's a, he's a good little joker with Kip Stevens, to be fair. But Dave's just not going to get enough there to uh, to win it out of those guys anyway, because someone that is certainly going to win it. Second week in a row, taking your race. One victory is Mr. Ash Sutton. Fantastic drive by Ash there. 
just led it pretty much from the very beginning. Not the best of starts, but he got it back. And it's going to be a CQR 1-2 then as Michael Hall finishes second ahead of Cesare Rizzo. Kip Stevens is fourth. Hampson is fifth. McIntyre brings it home in sixth. Great drive by McIntyre there as well. Charlie Summers is eighth behind Adam McNally in seventh. Pete Van Gogh ninth. And Taylor Lane is your AM category winner. Tenth overall. Brilliant drive by Taylor. The beast racing there. They're going to be very, very happy with that. James McRitchie finishes second in the AM category. And Taylor's teammate Jordan Giddings gets a, uh, a podium for them as well for beast racing in that category. Fantastic stuff by those guys. As we see the last few coming across the line then. Roy Viverke flies for the line with Rob Graham behind him. They're ninth and tenth in the AM category there. I believe their teammates as well actually in the automatic knock hill cars. Well, that was a really lively first race, Alex, and we don't expect anything less from these boys, really. They, uh, they always put on a good show, don't they? Oh, indeed they do, yeah. A uh, bit gutted that the early battle actually separated the ash from the field, um, you know, because I think uh, it would have been good to see them uh, battle with ash in this one, but, yeah, they just kept on going at it. <laughs> That's what caused, the, uh, caused that massive margin. Yeah, it was a real shame for it to be sort of nullified by that, but... Who are we waiting uh, for? We must be waiting for someone. Yeah, I'm just having a quick look down the list myself now. It might be Alex Cherney. Here he is. And that's not a... Uh, well, it's not a very bog standard MX-5. It's not quite factory spec right now. Back end is dipped down a lot, but... We've seen a couple of these guys wanting to make it onto the lead lap, I suppose. Is he just one lap down? I think he might be. I think that that's the reason I think he wants to do this, because he's got the chance of getting the reverse grid, isn't he? Uh, yeah, exactly that. Yeah. You know? Just giving it everything he can. And there he goes, across the line then. In turn one, is he going to do anything for style? No, he's just going to park it. You can imagine that that's not the nicest <laughs> thing to drive right now. You just want to get out of it as soon as you can. Alex Journey there then. 23rd in the pro category. But uh, yeah, he's all importantly tried to make sure he keeps it on that lead lap. And uh, I believe with that, we should have any moment now the race results once everyone has uh, got it all sorted anyway. And there you have it then. Ashley Sutton takes the win for CQR with Michael Hall, his teammate. Nearly eight seconds back as well. Brilliant margin for Ash there. Uh, making it a 1-2 for CQR. Cesare Rizzo finishes in third, rounding out the podium with uh, Kip Stevens in fourth, Dave Hampson in fifth. That name still throws me off, Kip. He's still managing to troll me even from there. Jack McIntyre is sixth, Adam McNally seventh, Charlie Summers eighth, Pete Van Gogh is in ninth, and Taylor Lane, tenth overall, wins the AM category. Brilliant result. Ryan Walker is 11th. James McRitchie, fantastic 12th place from him overall. Second in the AM category. Good battle all the way through that as well to watch. Luke Cooper, 13th. Jack Ashton, 14th. Jordan Giddings in 15th. With Lorne Murray, 16th. Carl Hardy, 17th. And Mick Barry in the number 675 machine is 18th. Following on from them is David Ayres. Jason Cooper rounds out your top 20. And it's Nick McCarron. Josh Thompson, 22nd. Still manages to claw his way back. Not quite sure how he did that because he managed to message me halfway through the race. Billy Rose is 23rd, Carl Jackalette 24th, Max Wright 25th, Scott Malcolm 26th, Euron Ersum is 27th, Pete Newman 28th. He's not going to be happy with that. He'll want a better result from the uh, remainder of the evening. Craig Williams 29th and Roy Viverke rounds out your top 30. We've then got Rob Graham, Lee Barmer, Tyler Luger Vickery still finishes on the lead lap after his incident early on. Well done to Tyler. Joe McDonald 34th and Stuart McFadden 35th. Alex Cherney we just saw then says three minutes down, so that will be just one lap, I'm pretty sure, because the lap times these guys were doing were just over two minutes. Yeah, so it, should should be shows a, it shows seven seven point zero six laps complete on the overlay. Everybody else is on eight, so I think, yeah, I think yeah. it's there. And just get away with it then. And the guys that were more than one lap down, Jordan McGlone, Nathan Davis, Anthony Ainsworth, Mikel Garcia, Mikey Key, Jamie Ayres, uh, Lewis Morgan, Ashley Beard, Brian Holmes, Alan McCain, and Steve Hefford is going to be one unhappy bunny right now after that incident on lap one, but we've seen it before that Steve's very good at gaining places through a race, Alex, and I'm pretty sure that he'll be able to claw something back from this evening, and hopefully, I mean, I'm pretty sure the reverse grid wheel won't help him this time, but after race two, maybe even after race three, it might help as well. Right. It's the time of the evening where I get to bring the reverse grid wheel up, and, uh, yeah, go from there. Now, I have to say... Your own has been pretty much spot on the last few weeks of guessing it. I think like in all of the three spins, he's got like two of them right every night. So he's predicting 30th. I promise you he's not bribing me. <laughs> I, I, need, I need to get that fact in there now because he's been so right recently and people are going to start to believe it. Right. Here we go. 
Uh, I've put it fourth on the grid as well, just for the record. So we'll let's have a look. Ah, no, he's way over there. He's miles off, but I mean, he's not far off. 35th. Oh, well, one person that's not going to be too happy with that is Alex Cherney. He put all that effort into keeping it one lap down. He's missed out by one place in the <laughs> end. But that puts the very fast Stuart McFadden on pole position for CQR. So he's going to be happy with that. Joe McDonald joins him on the front row. And Tyler Lugo Vickery is third. So some good luck finally comes Tyler's way. He's going to be starting third with Lee Barmer fourth. And Rob Graham is going to be fifth. Alex and I will join you then in about 10, 15 minutes time on the iRacing Esports Network for races two and, well, and then three and four after that, I suppose. Don't go away. We'll see you very soon.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network. Welcome back to Watkins Glen and the British Sim Racers MX5 Winter Series. I'm Chaz Draycott alongside Alex Simpson tonight, and we're here for the second race of the evening. Race one was a very frantic affair, with Ash Sutton eventually winning the race, and then we've had a reverse grid of 35, putting Stuart McFadden on pole position. And Alex, hopefully now with the, uh, the mixture of pro and am drivers now, this should be even more exciting than the first one. Oh, uh, yeah, I think it will be. Um, I think this is going to be really, really great. Uh, we'll see some, some interesting battles. We'll see some interesting moves as well, where um, people perhaps go for something that you yeah, wouldn't quite normally expect. So uh, we'll see a couple of more accidents as well. But uh, yeah, it's going to be good. Here we go then. The lights are coming on. A bit more overcast for this race as well, so not so much sunshine. Lights out and they're away. It's Joe McDonald and Stuart McFadden on the front row. McFadden's got a great getaway by the look of it. Looks like that car's streamed way out in front. Tyler Lugo Vickery's having a bit of a battle with Lee Barmer there for third and fourth place. But look at Stuart That's McFadden. Stuff. So much commitment through turn one. Launches it and away he goes. As the rest of the field sorts itself out. Really big, bright, colourful rainbow of MX5s flying up the S's. Craig Williams there down the inside of Barmer. He's side by side as they go up the S's. He's now on the outside. Like just in front of him, Viverke and Lugo Vickery have managed to sort themselves out as well through the middle. That's going to be Pete Newman. There's nearly contact. That would have been a massive accident if those two would have touched there. That is not the place you want to make contact. People trying Past to go on the, the grass. grass. Oh, he's on the grass. That's a move that's. Oh, oh no. no. Well, fortunately, that happened at just the right area because it could have been a lot worse. A lot, lot worse. Craig's not oh. going to be happy. Oh, who is that Newman. in CPR? Newman is it around? It is Pete Lost Newman. Newman. Yep. Ash Sutton's going down the order as well. Or is he going up and down the order? I can't quite tell. There he is. Looks okay. I think Ash is okay. Yeah, he's just going forward, isn't he? So he's already up 12 spots. So, yep. <laughs> <laughs> he's gone forward. We've had two corners. I just how? I, I, I mean, not to blow smoke up his backside, but how? How do yeah. you do that, honestly? I can't gain 12 places in a 24 hour race, never mind in two corners. But it's McFadden leading the way then from McDonald, Viverke third, Lugo Vickery fourth. Of course, on the timing tower on the screen on the left, if you didn't see it in race one, we're trialing it in a way that's quite different, where you can see the difference in the AM category and the PRO category, designated by the blue and green slots on the uh, left-hand side of the driver's names. As so we look at your own Ursum now, he is just following that battle of Barmer and Thompson. Thompson hoping for a better result this time round, didn't finish race one after an incident. Side by side to the second to last, barely any room in it there between Lee Barmer and Thompson. As they go over the kerb, nearly making contact, great evasive stuff by Josh, that's going to put him on the inside for the final corner. Barmer a little bit wide and Thompson makes the move, that puts him into sixth place overall. Eight places gained for Thompson as well, oh there's a car around, I think that was one of Result Clothing cars. Hopefully not making more contact, look at how much that field is spread out, look at that gaggle of cars. They're just everywhere, somehow, it's Carl Hardy that went around, he's got going again. There's Carl Jacolette. Oh, the car's going very wide. Josh Thompson, one of them, flying way off the track. Oh, three wide bar, but nearly making contact there as they go up the hill. Looks like everyone else here has managed to somehow get it all sorted. But it's just three wide even going up the S's. That's McNally and Van Gogh. This is just chaos, Alex, but it's organised, sort of organised chaos. It's great to watch. That's just the second half of the grid, that is. There's 26 cars ahead of me. It is insane. So. And to be honest, those cars ahead are pretty much battling the same as what these guys are. Where do you look? Where do you focus? We don't we don't need split screen, we need like ten screens. We really do. There's a couple of guys as well. I've noticed they're carrying different numbers in this separate race. I think some of them uh, we need to allocate some of them, I think, just to make sure everyone gets the same number each time, but liveries are pretty much the way oh, to do it. Oh, Barber. I think he made contact with McCarran there. I think he might have just bounced off the side. Oh I got hit by one of the um, Result clothing cars, was that Mikey Key? I'm not sure, but I tell you what, that's going to be his race done, surely. That, David that, that suspension is just going to be absolutely knackered. Yeah, that wasn't the. And uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe? Maybe not. Somehow he got away with that. Right, what is going on at the front? Because it's starting to look a little bit tasty. McFadden still with the lead. McDonald behind, of course, they're both first in their relative class, but of course, they still want the honours of winning the race. This is why we have 1 1 and 2 2 and. 3-3, three, 4-4, three, four, four, five, 5 Ah, we don't oh, get it all the way down. Here in Ashton. <laughs> Come on, boys, sort it out. We want the uh, yeah, we want the OCD to uh, to kick in. 
He nearly got there. I'll tell you what, Stuart McFadden's going to be sick of this. He works in McDonald's, I think. So he's going to be sick of having Joe McDonald stuck behind <laughs> him in that red and yellow livery. He's just going to be telling him to go away all race. But Stuart still leading the way, though. He's very, very quick. And he's shown that in every single car he's been in. But Joe is going to uh, have a big advantage here with the slipstream being on his side. And I think that's going to work for everyone further down the field. Thompson there, fastest lap of the race you could see on the left. That's been taken away from him. Oh, dear. Oh, no. Oh, that's not... the snapback. The death wiggle. Not what you want. No one is safe from the death wiggle. Especially not Joe McDonald. But he's managed to keep it together, though. He did put it in a wall, which is good enough in itself. Gets the car going. There's his teammate, Euro Nurse, flying past. And look at the brilliant battle here. Mick Barry's in the middle of it. One of the beast cars in there as well. Three Swift Cooper eSports cars. Some CQR guys as well. Mick Ritchie's in there as well. Fantastic mix of talent with these guys. And that's the beauty of this series as well. There's so many cars on track, especially in these rounds as well. We've not seen fields this big for quite a while. And there's so many of them, and there's such fantastic drivers just up and down the order. 200 k's at the end of the straight. Pretty decent speed for a little MX-5. Indeed. It really is. We just never know where to look, really. There's always action. I mean, look at that little streaming round in the background there. Coming out of the carousel, it's just... Pencil, how many there are? Look, just two by two everywhere. So many position changes. The timing screen to my left is going absolutely bonkers. Yeah. It's just it, you never know where to look. Oh, that's a good shot, Josh. You'll be happy with that one. Oh yeah, very happy with that. Trying to get a 23 beast racing car, loving it. Coming out of the boot section there. He's ahead of this fantastic battle behind him now, which is McDonald and uh, McIntyre and Summers is in there as well. As we look at Josh Thompson up to second place now. Behind Stuart McFadden, Stewart's two wheels on the grass. And this has surely got to be Thompson's opportunity to try and get a win in this race, Alex, because he's back near the front. And we've seen once Josh gets going and he's got up the pace, look at the run he's got out of there. Will he stay behind Stu there? I think he might be working together with him. Gives him a bit of a bump just to say, come on, I am here. Let's get going. But these guys uh, are working together in this uh, in this race, it seems, just yeah. trying to help each other out. He is down to CQR, of course, even though he is he's full team is uh, represented as, as Thrustmaster, so he runs the Thrustmaster livery, but of course uh, yeah, representing yeah. CQR in the championship so, see that a lot don't you in the BSR events, it was much the same like we had uh, obviously uh, Jack Sedgwick for us in the BSR TC, of course he runs for uh, for INEC, mm. and, uh, yeah we're fierce rivals, but when it comes to the BSR we're like, yeah let's, let's do it, let's work together and it's a nice community and that's what you get with these sorts of leagues. I mean, BSR do have a lot of different championships they run. They've been around for a very oh, long what time. A run. So it's, yeah, I was just about to say, what a fantastic slipstream we got there. To be fair, you probably don't even have to handle that to the slipstream as well. He's just got a great run out the first corner. I was and about see, to go, I was about to go, Nyaw, but I think Jason Cooper's the one that's going to go, yeah. Nyaw, straight down the middle of the both of them for the really? lead. He just came out of nowhere. Just, I'll just sneak through the middle. Thanks, boys. I'll see you in a bit. Josh Thompson trying to defend it as best he can. He'll give his life to save a uh, save Lewis in a place where Josh Thompson. He's probably the feistiest racer I've ever come across on iRacing. Stu's not going to take it lying down either. But you can just see how it's once again proof that on a track like this, the, the battle's never spread out. They're just always brought back together. All you need is a little bit of a scrap, a bit of a slipstream, and this MX-5 is as good as anything else on the surface. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, Nathan Davis. We we put a Facebook post out about him not long ago, being on his roof in the first race, and it's just this one's not gone well for him either. <laughs> Have a quick look back. <laughs> it's just it's just a sea of cars. They're just everywhere all the time. Is he going to make contact into there? Brian Holmes is on the Someone's outside. Someone's already gone ahead. Someone's already gone ahead. Ah, oh, what? And then... Oh, oh no. So there's That's... something else happened further up that took a few more people mm. out, I think. Hampson and oh. Barry there. That's Mick Barry in the 675 result clothing car. I think that was Michael Hall involved in that yeah, one. Yeah, I think Mike was involved in it as well. Yeah, there he is. Oh, no, Mick just sort of straight lined it a little bit, didn't he, when he got on the brakes? Just nowhere for anyone to go. Oh, Anything McNally. To... Yeah. I, I think if we, if we went oh, on board with let's McNally. Let's see if I can, uh, can find McNally. I don't know how he got through, but he did. You'll just see this. He just squeezes through between... Uh, Michael Hall in the wall somehow. Just pops out and there he goes. Oh! <laughs> that was uh, pinpoint accuracy there. Yeah. He made a bit of contact but he still made it through. Back to uh, the live action then. We probably missed about three laps getting too excited over that, but there you go. This is still the fantastic battle at the front then between Thompson and Cooper. What the S is, Thompson, another good run out of there. He's just nailed it out the first corner each time round. Side Started by side. Up. 
Fadden as well. Fadden needs him to bat a little bit. Of course, he'll close up if they're side by side, so neither of them getting too much draft. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, from seven tenths of a second, it's going to come down to about a half, I think. Let's bring the battle box up so you can see that. Yeah, to about half a second there, with Fadden. So uh, that was needed. Um, but uh, yeah, Josh to the lead, and uh, I don't think this is going to be the last of it. Again, contact going into the carousel. Carl Yakalet dropping down the order, trying desperately oh. to keep it out. Uh oh, uh -oh. But then, uh -oh. Oh, oh, no. oh, they've missed it. How did they miss <laughs> this? Surely, <laughs> surely not. Dodge him. How is that? How is that car not been collected oh, by someone else? That was so beautiful. Lovely. Yeah. And do you know what? He did the absolute right thing, did Carl. He just held yeah. the brakes, stayed absolutely still, and just hoped and prayed that everybody would avoid him. And he did it. He's going to finish. Now, I had a bit of an issue with paints earlier, so I'm not sure about you, but on my screen, that car was bright yellow, and I think he'll be yeah, pretty, yeah, grateful, if, he'll be pretty yeah. grateful that it was in that scenario. Yeah, I think so. You can't, can't really miss it, can you? It's like a big yeah. warning cone in the middle of the track. Like, whoa! There he is. Nice little uh, shout to Ash Sutton as well once again. 29 places gained so far. He's up is to that all? Place. I know, yeah, normally he's got about 31 by now, but the he's, got, he's, he's got in the point range. Four yeah. point, uh, no, what is he? He is 2.3 seconds behind the leader. So three laps, that would be some going. Um, but of course, a little zip up behind these guys. He's got Roy Viverke ahead of him. He's on the very back of the, uh, the lead battle. You can see Sutton using every last inch of the circuit and a little bit more as well. Summers just clipped the wall in the background there as well, just coming out the final corner. I think he gave it a little bit too much, clipped the uh, the tyres on the outside, but yeah, like you say, Ash has uh, got many sights and I'm pretty sure he won't give up at trying to get another win tonight, which will be absolutely brilliant. The Verke lead in the Am category at the moment. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen, little green strips next to the driver's names mean they are in the Am category. You can see Lugo, Vickery and Malcolm battling over second and third there. That's going to be a really good result for Tyler if he can keep that up. He's not had a great amount of luck in the MX-5 since joining this series and the Monday Cup. But uh, yeah, he's been doing all right for Jason Cooper. Trying to use every little bit of track he can, but uh, Max Wright's getting in on this as well, Alex, for the Auto McNock Hill team. He's going to be really happy to try and get down the inside there. Three wide into the carousel. Nearly makes contact with Thompson. They're so close to making contact there. Whenever you see that shot, you just think, please don't run wide, please don't run wide. You just don't want to see the cars like start to rotate too much. Thompson back down the inside, McFadden down the inside of right. Brilliant little dive there. Just yeah, put it get, to the inside when needed. Get, oh, he'll get the run. I didn't expect him to cut across Max so quickly, but he did. And uh, yeah, uh, fortunately, we didn't have any contact. Max running just a little bit wide. Verke still there, and you've got Sutton trying to get the moves now on Roy. So he's going to have two clean laps, I think. So, and where he's in this pack to try and get to the absolute very front. So, I think oh, I think he's got a great opportunity here. Yeah, he really has. He just did a really nice cutback on Roy there as well. He just caught it off the edge of the screen, but as he went into the, um, the right-hander, which was essentially the toe of the boot, he was a little bit behind around the outside, and I don't know how they didn't make contact, but a layer of vinyl must have at least come off the front of that MX-5 when he uh, crossed over, but he got it done. But once again, we've got two CQR cars, well, essentially three CQR cars, towards the front of the field. And they're doing a really sort of good, strong showing so far in this series, Alex. They uh, they jumped into it after seeing how popular it was becoming. And they're right up there with the likes of the uh, the Sim Lab team, Swift Coop Esports, and the XI Energy cars. Yeah, I'm glad they're enjoying it, actually, because it just brings another great team to the grid and competition uh, picks up. You know, this, like you said, really, the Sim Lab and, um, you know, the uh, the Cooper cars, you know, the XI, obviously. So. It's going to be, um, it's going to make for, you know, an epic season or year-long championship. Right, front two starting to pull a little bit away. That's not what Sutton wanted. He wants to get by Max Wright as soon as possible. Not many people oh, putting their nose no. up the inside, and that's why. And around goes Max. Max will be, well, miffed, to say the least. He's yeah. just going to have to sit there and hope and pray. Don't do it. Don't spin it. Oh, I'm sorry, Max. You're just going to have to wait, mate. Yeah, it's just, just yeah, no yeah. way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, nothing you can do. Right, sorry, we'll leave him. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll know on the, uh, on the event viewer uh, whether or not there's been a crash. It'll be highlighted yeah. in red. <laughs> Somebody else crashes to a standstill. Back to the lead then. Jason Cooper still defending for his life from Josh Thompson. They're both giving it everything. You can just see that car becoming a little bit unsettled as they chuck it into the boot section. McFadden still third, Viverke still leading the M category really well there. Malcolm and Lugo Vickery are his next uh, two challengers, and they're 10th and 11th overall, so 
sure he'll be quite comfortable to be doing that. There is a little uh, live timing link there in the YouTube chat for you as well. Just in case you want to be able to keep up with everything that we can see from the live timing as well. Get as much info as you want. But Jason Cooper, I think, Alex, is probably one of his best bets here would be to not try and be behind Josh Thompson, but onto that straight, that may be the defining sort of overtaking move of this race. Depends on who's in front out at the end of that, uh, that straight into the carousel. Because after that, while there are the odd, op um, odd overtaking opportunities, it's not the easiest to do around here. I mean, the likes of even Josh Thompson can't quite get it done against Jason. So it's sort of maybe one way of trying to guarantee it. Here's he hits the curb, though, and gets a bit of a slow run. But you never know whether that was strategic or not. Oh, I think Ash just caught the wall in the background there, coming out the final corner as well. But onto the final lap, then. It looks like it's going to be between these two, Jason Cooper and Josh Thompson. Better in the background one. as well. Yeah, there's yeah. a big stream of cars. There's about six or seven stuck together, isn't there? Not giving an inch, these guys. They have really pulled away from the guys behind, though. Just shows the pace that they've got, even with the slipstream around here. And I think Tyler Lugo Vickery is dropping back a little bit. You can just see on the timing tower he lost a couple of places there. As Thompson side by side with Cooper down the straight. McFadden side by side with Sutton. Thompson's got a great run. We've seen him do it a couple of times tonight where he's got a fantastic run out of turn one. I think he might have it done before the carousel. You can just see he's only a tiny bit in front, but no, Cooper. Coming back at him now, it's levelled out a bit. He's down the inside still, side by side through the carousel. Just carrying the momentum. He just needs that overlap of what Cooper needs to do is cut him off and across the front. He does exactly that. Don't leave the door open. And uh, doesn't do that. <laughs> Josh trying to go around the outside, wants to run. Of course, that would have been the inside for the next corner if he'd had it. But once again, Cooper just covering it off. Look at the Vick as well, just get, he's just oh, cut the front off McFadden, he's gone back up into fourth place there, I thought McFadden and Sutton would have got away, but yeah, he's done a brilliant move and got past McFadden again, and coming into that then is Jack Ashton, but it is between the two boys at the front then, Thompson and Cooper, putting on a great show all race long for us, Thompson puts it down the inside, you can just see the sun coming out there, he's made a bit of a mistake as Cooper runs a little bit wide, not too much. He's going to have to uh, cover the inside here. Yeah. So just going to try and hold it around the outside. Of oh. course, now, if you can keep the line around the outside of this corner and the next... Oh, that's too wide, oh. far too wide. You can't. You will have the inside for the final corner. Um, you've got half a chance, but in the end, it's not happened. Will Josh dive into the final turn? I think he's too far back, three-tenths. Yeah. Might have a little look, but it's not going to happen. That's a great, great drive from, uh, from Jason Cooper there. You see Josh giving it everything so close to the wall. But Jason Cooper wins your second race of the evening ahead of Josh Thompson. Ash Sutton takes third. That's 32 places gained. Fantastic drive. Viverke wins the AM category. Brilliant drive by Roy. He's going to be very happy with that. McFadden finishes fourth in the pro category. Ashton fifth. And Malcolm finishes second in the AM category. Lugo Vickery finishes fourth. He just misses out on his podium in the end. McRitchie gains his second podium of the evening in the AM category. Great drive by him as well. He gained. Just having a quick look at the positions gained there by McRitchie. Seven places overall, but Brian Holmes gained 30th. And as we were saying before, with Brian's injury that he's had recently, that's a hell of a drive, Alex. Brilliant yep. stuff to see that he's still on the pace. Yeah, clearly that auto-clutching or uh, blipping or whatever it is that was doing it, it's not, it's not <laughs> causing him any problems. No, he's doing all right. It certainly is. Alan McCain, we saw he had a bit of an issue in race one, but good to see him surviving it there. But... There is your race two winner then. Very deserving winner as well, Jason Cooper. Great drive game. 15 places as well. And I don't know about you. I mean, you're you're a lot quicker than I am, Alex. I know that. But um, I never go into a race thinking, oh, I'm 16th on the grid. I could win this. But guys like Jason could, could definitely do that. As we see McIntyre up to his old tricks, giving yeah. it a bit of a drifty poos in the background. But what brilliant racing that was by Jason and Josh. They kept it nice and clean as well. Josh will be happy to have... Uh, to finish that one unlike race one once again BSR MX5 series giving us exactly what we want to see and there's your AM category winner Roy Viverke good to see Roy back on top oh blimmin Arnco get out of the way <laughs> he was always up there as well in the uh, the club series with Roy Viverke he sprung a very uh, surprising third place in the championship in I believe it was season three no one really expected him to be up there and he just sort of sneaked his way to the top no race wins or anything but just consistency and that's what got him that and category win tonight. As we see Jason Cooper trying to copy Jack McIntyre and get some drifting on the go, but I think no, Jack's, 
No. It's not happening, that's I not terrible. Jack, Jack's got it a bit more nailed down than he has. Come on, Jack. Here he is. <laughs> it's the Jack cam. Oh, yeah. we've got one corner left, make it count. Oh, we will. There you go. Oh, look at that! <laughs> look at Boss! Oh, oh he kicks it out of the wall, too. Uh, I'm gonna. I still refer back to this. If you haven't seen the broadcast from last season at Donington Park, where Jack McIntyre drifted an entire lap of the Donington Park Grand Prix circuit, you need to go and have a look at it because it's something else, isn't it, Alex? Oh, it was. It was. Yeah, pretty impressive stuff. Right, we're still waiting for someone to cross the line. Who is this? Who are we waiting for? Is it Alex? Here we go. No, it's Max Wright. <laughs> Max Wright just coming across. Oh, yeah. oh, look at the damage on that. So, but worth doing for Max because he has. He's still on the lead lap, so he will, of course, get the opportunity for the reverse grid. So, yeah, all of them doing um, drifts and God knows what around uh, Cooper doing donuts in the uh, in the pit lane. Uh, and uh, Max is showing he can drift, too. <laughs> well, that car's drifting constantly at the moment. It's not really going in a straight line, but brilliant second race. And uh, the reverse grid giving us that all important action that we all look for. And we, of course, hope that you are enjoying the stream. It's a pleasure to be on the iRacing Esports Network for you again. It's my favourite evening of the week. Really love doing this for you uh, for you guys. And I'm sure Alex enjoys it as well. We, are, we always have a good laugh doing this series, and I'm sure they have a good laugh doing the actual driving as well. There you go then. Jason Cooper wins the race nearly, well, not even four tenths of a second ahead of Josh Thompson. Ash Sutton finishes third after gaining 32 positions. Roy Viverke finishes in fourth, winning the AM category there. Stu McFadden is 5th, Jack Ashton 6th, Jack McIntyre 7th, with Charlie Summers 8th and Nick McCarran 9th. Scott Malcolm rounds out your top 10, 2nd place in the AM category, good result for Scott. Billy Rose is 11th, Alex Cherney is 12th, he's going to be a much happier boy with that one than uh, compared to his first race result. Cesare Rizzo up there once again, 13th place, Brian Holmes 14th, Luke Cooper 15th, Jerome Ersum 16th, James McRitchie rounds out your AM podium, with Tyler Lugo Vickery 18th, 4th in AM, he will still be happy with that. Taylor Lane finishes in 19th place with Oscar Wilde, which is Kip Stevens in 20th. Got me out again. 21st is Lorne Murray, 22nd Jamie Ayres, Ryan Walker 23rd, Pete Newman 24th, Ashley Beard is 25th with Carl Hardy 26th, Adam McNally 27th, Rob Graham 28th, Mikey Key 29th, Michael Hall is rounding out your top 30. Then we've got Carl Jacolette, Alan McCain, Anthony Ainsworth, Joe McDonald, Jordan Giddings and David Ayres 36th. Max Wright, final car on the lead lap as we just saw then. Peter Van Gogh is 38th, Jordan McGloan 39th, and then it's Mick Barry, Dave Hampson, Nathan Davis, Mikel Garcia, Lee Barmer, Steve Hefford, another non-finish, he's not going to be happy with that, and Craig Williams finishing 46th overall. And for the second time tonight, I believe Mr. Simpson will have the reverse grid wheel to hand. Indeed I will. All right. See, last time out, 35th. Where are we going to end this time? Just waiting for your own to put his prediction in, just to see if we're going to be going to be close. He's a, bit, he's a bit tardy this time. He was on the ball last time. Oh well, we'll give it a spin and we'll see where it's uh, where it's going to be. Could be a small one. Might make it all the way to four minus four. Could stay on fifteen. No, it's not four minus four. Okay, so that would have been Max Wright. So it would have paid off for him, but for the second time tonight, it's not going to be. And that's going to be Anthony Ainsworth on pole position alongside Alan McCain. Carl Jacolette and Michael Hall will be on the second row with Michael Key rounding out fifth on the grid. So that'll be a very, very exciting front uh, front few cars anyway. It's a nice sort of mix of talent. Alex and I will join you again in about 10, 15 minutes time for the third race of four this evening on the iRacing Esports Network. Don't go away. We'll see you very soon.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and the BSR MX5 Winter Series. Chaz Draycott here alongside Alex Simpson. For the third race of the evening, lights are just coming on now and they are away. We've got the reverse grid for this one as well, with uh, which put Anthony Ainsworth on the pole position as they all lead away then into Turn 1. It's quite a long drag for these MX5s down to Turn 1 actually, Alex. It's uh, not the sort of shortest of runs as you'd expect in a car like this. No, you can, you know, you can get a move done if you're in the middle of the pack. Certainly there's going to be people getting the slipstream runs down into turn one. And that's what makes it very, very interesting. Oh, dear, that's going to be a big one. Oh, we, when we see it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't jump. Oh, yeah. Oh, there dear. You go. Oh, wow. Big, big. Yeah. Track is basically blocked. Oh. <laughs> oh wow! That's Someone just... just that's not the tastiest, the tastiest of incidents there. Just looking down, who we've lost. Oh, that was Roy from from hero to zero. I'm afraid. So probably not his fault, but yeah. Wow, that was you try and figure out who that was. Who the first car involved in Sutton's involved in that? I'm I'll see you again on the event viewer. Crazy. Jamie Ayres, perhaps one of the fairly first few to get involved. Well, that's. Oh, jeez, look at that. Lots of separate little ones, but poor Jamie went for a ride, didn't he? Yeah. Jeez! Yeah. I'm, still, I'm still laughing at him. Oh, oh, oh there's one of the um, Swift Coop Resports cars nice, nicely sort of reversing past there. I think it was Mr. Cherney. Um, I happen to know as well that uh, Mr. Ayres does use VR, so. He's not going to be a massive fan of what just yeah. happened there. I think that'll put him out for a little bit, but there we go. Jackalette, you can see then, second place at the moment. Michael Hall leading the way, and it's two XI Esports Energy cars. They've not been showing the uh, the greatest of results so far this season. They've had a bit of uh, bad luck so far, as it seems, but Ashley Beard is third overall, second in pro, and Adam McNally's fourth overall, third in pro. So hopefully they'll be getting a nice haul of points from this. We've got some great lighting going on at the moment as well. Very late in the afternoon here on the iRacing service and late in the evening in the UK where Alex and I are. All over the world, wherever you are watching from, we hope you're enjoying it. A bit of side-by-side -side action in the background there between Ryan Walker and Anthony Ainsworth into turn one. Our very own Ryan Walker gets the move done. Ainsworth way out on the uh, the overrun there, nearly making contact with uh, that's going to be Pete Newman in the CQR car. Mick Ritchie's in there as well. Just, oh, it's got to be so careful not to make contact up there, Alex. It can be uh, a bit of a nightmare sometimes. Oh. Squeeze through, nearly making contact again. Oh, it can get really, really sketchy as these guys uh, make their way up the hill. I'm so glad that we don't record our audio separately anymore like we used to do back in the old BSR uh, TC days when it was on TV. Because I tell you what, Lee Thompson, he'd be taking out some of these little outtakes and you're like compiling a little sex video noise from me tonight. I tell you, I've come up with some great ones. <laughs> but uh, there's been some epically close moments that's just had me on the edge there. <laughs> I'm sure they're not the only one as well. I've people at home are wincing watching this, to be fair. But great battle from some of these AM drivers here. This is between um, Jackalette in the very yellow machine and Carl Hardy down the inside. That's for the AM lead. I don't think Hardy expected uh, Jackalette to go that wide into the uh, the toe section of the boot there, as they call it. But he's managed to uh, get the move done, it seems. Still side by side slightly as they go into what's going to be the heel of the boot. He's not quite got it done. Yeah, he does. Gets it done on the brakes. Ryan Walker's going to be there to try and take advantage as well. In the Excite car, Pete Newman's going to be having a look too. Seems a bit more tame so far. I mean, that crash has sort of nullified and... Uh, I think it's split it apart, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, we haven't got that massive pack like we had before, um, where every battle on the circuit was pretty much red um, yeah. on our timing screen uh, last race. There, there is actually some orange and white involved in there now, which is, yeah, it's a, it's a highlight colour to uh, for us to spot how close battles are. Doesn't yeah. ever work that much with this series, does it? Because they're normally all red. <laughs> As uh, Ainsworth with some problems there. Yeah, he's having a bit of an issue. He's done. Yeah, 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 he is done. Taylor Lane, fastest lap of the race, 207.1. Makes me a very happy boy. Keep it up, Taylor. He's doing a great job. He's actually just jumped into the series in the last week or so, actually. Um, he's not been doing a massive amount of league racing, as far as I know. But he really wanted to get involved with, uh, with the MX5s. Him and Jordan Giddings have been working well together. I uh, deal with those guys behind the scenes for beach racing and 
Yeah, it's a good little sort of partnership we've got going on. Plenty of banter flowing, but plenty of pace on track by these guys as well. Look at this little gap that we've got here. Sorry, the little group, sorry. Just uh, two by two as it goes down the straight. Doesn't look like much at the moment, but these guys are uh, giving everything they can. Ashley Beard then into second place ahead of his teammate Adam McNally. These guys will want to work together here, won't they, Alex, to try and get after Michael Hall, because Michael eventually may not be able to keep that slipstream if these guys start sort of pulling each other towards uh, towards Michael. And it's another Excite car behind them, actually, in uh, Ryan Walker there. So good showing from these guys this time around. Yeah, like I say, they've been pretty quiet for the first uh, couple of races tonight. So, yeah, good to see um, good to see them in a better race. It looks like Alex Cherney. Yeah, it is very nice. It looks like Alex Cherney might have um, retired from the race. Certainly been involved in something. You see Taylor now battling the top few spots in the M category. Bit of a uh, flicker there from Ellis Stevens. Rizzo is 10th in the pro category as well behind him. You can just see they're a little bit further away from this battle. They're not quite as involved. There's a good bit of position swapping going on around here. Then Lorne Murray is in this one as well with uh, Luke Cooper in front of him. Jason Cooper, of course, their teammate. One race two of the night. Jason at the moment just having a quick look down the order to see if I can see where he is. I think he might have been caught up in the first I can't quite see him. Oh no, he's 25th. He's lost 24 places, it says. But um, I know he didn't start on pole, that might be just be my timing screen. Um, I got into the session rather late, so it might have been after the start that that's uh, sort of calibrated itself. But anyway, there's Luke Cooper past Carl Jacolet. Carl Hardy still leading the way in the AM category. You can see the different lines people are taking. Some of them want to risk just going that little bit wide. And others just want to hug it to the inside as they go up the S's once again. We're already halfway through the race, Alex. This one's flown by so far. This is crazy. Every race uh, this season to the end of last season were very, very similar. Just gone in, a, gone in an instant. Doesn't look like, um, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I agree with what you were about to say. Four races as well. Um, just boom, you know, <laughs> they're done in no time. It does indeed. Three X like cars getting closer together, aren't they? Yeah, they, they need to work together. This was just what I was about to say, really. They need to really start working together, exchanging positions on the straight when they're actually going to gain time rather than lose it. Um, because at the moment, Hall's driving away from them, so they, whoever's the quickest, they really need to get them to the front and um, yeah act as the you know like the peloton, peloton on uh, road to road bike racing yeah they need to just it's, it's not as easy as it's, it's easier said than done to work together in this so to be fair because you all want to try and gain as much ground as you can and in turn help your teammates out but not that easy and they've got Pete Newman onto the back of them now as well so it's an excite and CQR battle for the top five See, Ellis Stevens are really giving everything in the Swift Cooper Esports car, trying to unsettle Lorne Murray, who is all over the back of Luke Cooper. Doing a good job of putting him under pressure. Puts the nose down the inside, side by side, just coming out of the boot section. Clips the kerb though, and that's going to ruin his run, and surely Ellis is going to get the move done on here. He does, into the second to last corner. You can see a beautiful sky in the background there. Fantastic what iRacing have done with the, uh, the sort of environments that you can get now. And, also, people have noted the uh, the temperature changes on the track have been a big factor in this, and I understand that quite a lot of people were uh, were stating their sort of displeasure at the fact that the temperature changes and they can't get a consistent uh, temperature on track. But well, I have that, to say, I absolutely loved it during the yeah. Neo. Um, the thing is, is it just adds that much more to a dynamic for the endurance racing. I'm like, okay, I can understand why we're racing for for the. Um, for the sprint races but for the endurance you know we had to think of what the car was going to handle like over the six hours of you know, of racing you know so mm. it's piping hot to start and of course it was almost night by the time we finished so oh, oh dear. no that's mcritchie mcritchie's around that's carl hardy the am class leader in this race he's involved as well someone's taking the bus stop for evasive action <laughs> making the most of every bit of track they can. Well, that was a real shame. Not quite sure how that started. I was looking at Pete Newman trying to go between all the Excite cars. He nearly did it. He nearly pulled it off, and it just looked like they were going to make contact. And then all of a sudden, Lord Murray's going down the order still, so he must have pulled out of the way. That was a real shame. That didn't have to happen, but it's so easy to just sort of wash wide into the car next to you. And 
you know, just move around slightly on the straights as we see Newman still fighting away through these Excite cars. There's four of them involved now because Brian Holmes has got in on this. So while we were saying um, <laughs> they've been quiet before, they're certainly not now. And Pete Newman's going to get sick of him here. He's going to, uh, he's at least got to buy one of the swamped. drinks. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, just getting swamped. Just to very quickly finish my point, but, uh, you know, cars that were fast at the start of the race in the really hot temperatures that, you know, obviously set them up towards that were somewhat slower at the end, you know, when it was freezing cold temperatures. So it gives a, right, it gives a huge dynamic. You know, you need a car that's going to work in all weather conditions and things like that. So, and uh, to some extent, it's the same here because it's predictable because they do say that they're going to set the sessions, um, you know, to follow a relevant time schedule. So, you know, at the start, it's going to be a bit warm, you know, it's cooler and then it gets a bit warmer and then it starts to cool back down. And, towards the fourth race so you just got to be aware of that and adjust your car as, as needed to over the four races rather than just using the one sort of set up for all four races and it's, and it's brought something that even more sort of realism to iRacing which I mean iRacing's up there pretty much in the pinnacle of how close you can get to doing the real thing I mean as you can see these guys they all put a lot of effort into it and everyone in the iRacing service tends to as well it's, it's a much more serious sim and a lot more out there and um it sort of begs the question though if, oh someone's around yes it's surely yep you can hear contact there someone is around I think it's Josh Thompson Josh is flying down the order he clipped the wall coming out the last corner a moment ago and I'm thinking he might have just something broken on that car and it's not behaving itself was, oh no he gets contact from Rizzo actually I eat my words Josh gets well and truly wiped out there he's lucky he doesn't get collected by anyone else that was a real shame there not quite sure why the contact had to happen but Rizzo put his nose down the inside and unfortunately so, got look at it. absolutely hammered. Yeah. Not having the best of times, although nice little cutback on uh, Nick McCarran down the inside there. He's chasing Charlie Summers through the carousel. Mick Ritchie's involved as well, two by two, as they go into the boot section. I was just about to say that with uh, with this realism involved now because of these different sort of environments that they, uh, that they can bring, changing temperatures, people I know, I've, I heard that there were people complaining about it, saying that they want static weather to be able to set the car up so they know how it's going to behave, and it's like, well try and try and do that in real life is my answer to that, you can't, <laughs> it's just it's one of those things, it makes it all the more a level playing field, I think, like you say in the uh, in the Neo Endurance race, hot at the beginning, some cars are quicker colder at the end, some cars are slower, it's just how it is in real life, isn't it? It's, it's a fantastic way to get it across in the sim as well and it works really well, I find yeah, I, I, again, the, I think, um, you know, I'm not going to disguise the fact that the tyres are still a bit too sensitive to the to the temperature. You know, once the newer tyre model comes out, I think, yeah, that's when we'll see it. It'll be truly amazing. Yeah, definitely. And it's also worth noting as well, you'll have probably seen it tonight, especially now as well, that some of the reflections on the bodies of these cars look even better. And with this new sky, it just seems to have added that little bit of effect. Oh no, there's contact between the x side cars. No, who's that? Someone's been pounded off the track. Ashley Beard and team manager McNally. That's like Andy me. Here's a door-shaped P45. Just take that and off you go, son. Launches him outside of turn one. I'm sure that wasn't intentional, of course, but real shame for, uh, for Ashley Beard. Then he's been putting in a great race so far. All, all evening as well. But Brian Holmes actually leads these cars at the moment with his very damaged leg. But somehow they're still holding on. There's one lap to go after this, but I don't think this is going to stay clean, Alex. Look at it. No, Ryan Walker's no. on the left. He's got Luke Cooper in the middle. He was on the grass a minute ago. There's Michael Hall driving away with it. The two by two teammates hopefully don't collide. I've got my fingers crossed in front of my screen right now. Watching these like Luke Cooper putting them under loads of pressure. Ellis Stevens in there also. And you've got Pete Newman trying to get involved. He's been trying to work his way through these Excite cars for a number of laps now. They're holding fort at the moment, and they're doing a good job of defending it, to be honest. It's uh, it's good to see that they're putting up such a good fight, if I'm honest with you. I expected them to sort of just be like parting of the seas with Pete Newman and just get out of the way, but, yeah, great stuff from these guys. This well, Hall looking really, really good at the front. Just take... need to give the leader some love at the minute. He's still got 3.2 second lead, so it's just gradually built up. Battle in pack, and, uh, yeah... As much as Newman wants to get to the front of it, he's being bullied out of it right now. Yeah, it's good defensive tactics. And of course, in their, uh, I'm going to say, an in inverted commas radio channel that they'll have right now, they'll be communicating. Oh, no, has McNally been turned? He has. Oh, I thought I saw the rear end of that car start going around. Was he turned or did he just lose it? Let's see from another angle. I think Newman just gets a cutback here and goes down the inside. 
Yeah, oh, just, just enough. Tiny, yeah, just enough. tiniest bit of touch. Real shame that. Oh, it's, that's the number. Stuart McFadden. Yeah, 53. I was going to say, is that Newman? But <laughs> it's just ironically, well, coincidentally, anyway, it's one of his teammates. But that's really split this battle up now between the Excite cars. And it means that Walker is still third. But Newman is fourth now. Cooper fifth. Stephen sixth. Ashton seventh. Wow, Luke Cooper really avoiding that. Rizzo's around. And that'll bring delight to Josh Thompson. I'm pretty sure it'll be a sort of a karma moment that Fernando Alonso famously said over the radio. But Rizzo oh, no. around. He's in the wall. He's yeah. got it going again. Yeah, I thought for a minute he was he was done for. But now it looks like he's going to be able to finish. So we'll at least get a reverse grid on the final, final race. Potentially. Depending on where the wheel spins. Yeah. Fingers crossed for him anyway. You've got to give a shout to Brian Holmes though. Fantastic to see him doing so well, even with his injury. Just showing that uh, he is an amazing talent within I race. I think he's around 6,000 I ratings. Um, I think he's near that anyway at the moment. So we all know he's no slouch, but any sort of injury can hinder your progress no matter how good you are. And he's just showing that that hasn't hindered him. His teammate Ryan Walker having a good showing as well. Our very own Ryan Walker. But Pete Newman's going to be just seeing them Excite cars in front thinking, if only, if only that incident would have happened, I probably uh, could have tried to get with him. Your own Ursum already getting his bet in for those spinning wheels, saying spin it to 25. As Ellis Stevens now really under attack from Ashton and Beard. They're nearly going to go three wide here into the, uh, into the heel part of the boot. This isn't going to go well. Place your bets now, ladies and gentlemen. And it's actually been down the inside of the pair of... Oh, he's hit the curb, so he's run wide, and now it's Ashton. They're still three wide somehow. They go in the corner three wide and come out of it three wide in a different order. Stevens is on the inside. Then it's Beard and Ashton. But coming into the final corners then is Michael Hall. 36 positions gained by Michael Hall to win this race, apparently, according to my timing screen. Now, I know that's probably not correct because I came in partway through. Second three. seek, you are winning of the evening then. Michael Hall takes race three. Fantastic stuff. And Ryan Walker just overtakes Brian Holmes across the line there for XI Energy Esports. Newman fourth, Cooper fifth, Stephen sixth, Ashley Beard and Ashton seventh. Taylor Lane is going to very uh, pleasingly for me take the AM category win in race three of the evening. That's two wins for him tonight. Jack Collette second. Mick Ritchie is third in the M category as well. Fantastic by those boys. They'll be very happy with their podiums. McNally recovered to 12th in pro overall. So he did uh, did all right in the end, but he'll be a bit gutted in that one, especially after making uh, making contact with his teammate. But just as Mr. Christian Rose has said, good old Bertie. Michael Hall has won that one. And what a drive as well. Just nice and controlled from Michael. He used to take a lot of wins in the, uh, in the club series when it was about done a lot of hard work to get to this point on the service and I'm sure he'll be chuffed with that that armco very pestily getting in the way as we can see <laughs> but CQR will be happy as we were saying before Alex they've come into this series and uh, really put on a good show so far and there's his teammate Ash Sutton alongside him there but that's two wins tonight one apiece for those boys very very well done indeed and well deserved I mean they, we always see no matter what series they're in the CQR team put a good lot of effort in and there's the man himself Mr. Taylor Lane takes his second race of the evening. You can probably hear my smile through my voice. Where's, where's his livery, mate? On my screen, there's no livery. Yeah, I was going to say, I've not got one actually either. It was, oh, I, had, I had it on for the first race, but I don't know where it's gone now. Real shame that. But, yep, Taylor there wins it for Beast Racing at least. Fantastic result from Taylor. We'll get that added. Well, yeah. I hopefully it'll get added to the paint back. I can only imagine it's just not in the paint back. That's why it's not showing. Well,. Fortunately, as being part of that team, I have a livery for it, so I'll send it. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get it done. We'll get it sorted. Add it to the back. Add it to the back. We're all good. But yeah, another good, good race, Alex. Another yeah, another. Good, 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 yeah, another good one. Um, yeah, epic crash. I thought for a minute, just the way the light shined on the indicator there. I thought he put his indicator on to come into the pits. I was like, what is he doing? And I was like, no, the damn indicators, Alex. Come on, you know that you've been on the surface for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> but it looked like he turned his indicator on. <laughs> Only, eh? one, one, <laughs> one day you never know we could have indicators on our racing that'll probably be on the forums within a few minutes but yeah fantastic to watch that again see i don't really want that kind of indicator i would like an indicator but yeah of a different kind one that you can uh, show your displeasure to another driver that's what we need <laughs> we're doing right, animate right. we're doing animated stuff right now come on <laughs> racing let's have it animate that yeah anim animated pit crews you can have an animated middle finger <laughs> <laughs>
you never know. You never know with these things. I racing have teased a lot of stuff before to us, and uh, we thought, no, nah, they're not going to do that. And then they've actually gone and done it. So we'll. Uh, I can't we'll imagine they'll ever do that, but it would be <laughs> epic. So, and I don't mind talking about it on their own channel, just because you know, <laughs> come on, we no, really they, want it. They've got a lot of good banter recently, the iRacing media team, and uh, it's been great to watch it all. We've been very, very happy with it. Well, I have. Don't anyway, we just have it. to bribe them with pizzas? If we send them enough pizzas, that should be uh, that should be doable. I think so. Well, they, they took the mick out of the, um, I believe, that probably the funniest thing that they've done is they took the mick out of the guy that crashed the uh, Chevrolet pace car, didn't they, at uh, Belle Isle? And they did it in an Indy car, and they said, see, it's uh, not that difficult to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's your results then. Michael Hall takes the win for CQR with Ryan Walker and Brian Holmes rounding out the podium for Excite Energy Esports. And then it's CQR again with Pete Newman in fourth. And then two Swift Cooper Esports cars, Luke Cooper and Ellis Stevens. Ashley Beard is seventh. He is racing for Exit Energy Esports, and Jack Ashton is eighth. So, real uh, sort of clean sweep for those guys up there. Taylor Lane wins the AM category in that one. Ash Sutton rounding out the top ten. Carl Jackal at eleventh. Dave Hampson in twelfth. James McRitchie rounds out your AM podium. Nick McCarran is fourteenth. Adam McNally, sorry, fifteenth. Craig Williams sixteenth. Jack McIntyre seventeenth, and Cooper is eighteenth. Rizzo nineteenth. Theirs is twentieth. Mikael Garcia twenty-first. Your owners from twenty-second. Charlie Summers, 23rd. Stuart McFadden, 24th. Law Murray, 25th. Mick Barry, 26th. And it's Alex Cherney, Max Wright, Steve Hefford actually finished that one, albeit in 29th place. Anthony Ainsworth is the last car on the lead lap. Scott Malcolm and Pete Van Gogh still eligible for the reverse grid wheel, which is one lap down. And then cars more than one lap down after that is Josh Thompson, Carl Hardy, Billy Rose, Mikey Key is 36th. And then it's Rob Graham, Jamie Ayres not having a great night tonight. It's Jamie. Then it's Alan McCain, Tyler Lugo, Vickery, Roy Viverke, Joe McDonald, Jordan McGlone, Nathan Davis, and Lee Barmer, all, I assume, taken out in that first lap incident, which is, uh, for most of these drivers, Alex, it's going to be quite a talking point for this evening, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I think so. I, you know, it was a big one. Unfortunately, a couple of people got collected in it that, you know, had actually slowed down to avoid it, and people didn't see it and just plowed on in there. So, yeah. That always causes a little bit of friction on the uh, Facebook group afterwards. So that'll be worth a read. Get your popcorn out and uh, yeah, enjoy that one, I'm sure. And I believe it's uh, reverse grid wheel time for the third and final time of the evening. It is. And Chaz, just as uh, on the chat as well, um, Joey McDonald just saying that they didn't upload his paint. So that is why it's not in the, uh, in the paint pack. So get him to do that, please. Oh, right. Okay. Spinning the wheel. Uh, that's going to be a small one. It is going to be a small one this time. It is 15th. Oh, wow. Well, I tell you what, someone's luck has changed. Mr. Adam McNally will take pole position for Excite Energy Esports after his uh, incident earlier on, so he'll be thanking Pete Newman for that little uh, little tap. Nick McCarran will join him on the front row for Sim Lab. Hopefully those guys can get a good result out of this race with Nick up there. James McRitchie's going to be third. Dave Hampson, fourth. He's been quick all night, so it'll be good to see him getting through here as well. And Carl Jackalette will round out your top five. Ash Sutton's going to be sixth, though. So uh, surely Ash is going to be in with a shout of winning this uh, fourth and final race tonight. Alex and I will join you on the iRacing Esports Network in about 10, 15 minutes' time. Don't go away. It's bound to be a good one.
Welcome back to the iRacing Esports Network and the BSR MX5 Winter Series. We're here for the fourth and final race of the evening at Watkins Glen. My name is Chaz Draycott alongside Alex Simpson and it's sunset here in uh, the beautiful scenic... Well, just Watkins Glen. It's just Watkins Glen. It's just what more can you say about it, Alex? It's a fantastic track and we've seen great racing all night because of it. Indeed, we have uh, three great races uh, and this will be interesting. Never really covered a, a, a race in dusk conditions, have we, before? So uh, it's not completely dark and you can actually make the, the course and everything out. So this is going to be great. Yeah, this should be good fun. We did have it last time out at Brands Hatch, but it wasn't quite getting this dark, I don't think. I think it no. finished in about this sort of light, so be interesting to see. You can just see the grid there. McNally and McCarran on the front row, then it's McRitchie, so it's all the mooks at the beginning. The lights are coming on. And for the final time this evening, the lights are out and they're away. Seems like everyone's got a pretty decent getaway. There's nobody going particularly slowly. All of our pole sitters have had really good starts tonight, and uh, McNally has certainly continued that trend. Of course, Ash Sutton missed a gear or something earlier on, but he managed to get back up there. Speaking of the devil, he's into fifth overall already, started sixth. I've got to say that he's a uh, contender to take the win tonight. You can see these fantastic little MX-5s flying up the S's, headlights ablaze. McNally has checked out so far, Alex. He's had a great start, but here comes Mr. Sutton and side by side with Nick McCarran and James McRitchie. We're not even halfway around lap one and we've already got a three wide scenario on our hands. So this is bound to be a feisty final race of the night. Yeah, let's just hope they don't ricochet off and which can easily happen because I think that would be even worse than the one we saw in race three. But uh, yeah, fortunately they all seem to survive. So that's good. And Taylor Lane does have a livery on that car this time round. So we can see the beautiful Beast Racing livery, not that I'm biased at all. And up to second place is Dave Hampson. He's done a great job there of having a good scrap with Ash Sutton. He's managed to get the place. Oh, there's a car around. Ryan Walker's going down the, uh, down the timing screen. He's in the wall on the outside there. Actually, he's managed to get it back on the back. And Sorry, and Rizzo and McIntyre. Jack McIntyre's having a torrid time so far. He was the, ser I think he was the spring and autumn champion. He's just having a nightmare with this at the moment. He's just its not going his way, unfortunately. You would have thought that team would be all over it since becoming Simlab as well. They had such good... Oh, big crash in the background. There's a Simlab car around. Hampson gets shoulder barged out of the way by Ash Sutton as he takes the place and goes up to second already. But there was a big accident in the background there. I'm just trying to see who went down the order. I think Stuart McFadden was the car involved. Ryan Walker's managed to carry on. Billy Rose is going down as well. Let's have a quick look. Pete Van Gool. Oh, he just comes over to the left gradually, doesn't he? And just gets caught by your own Ersum. Yeah, I don't think there's much your own could have done. Oh, Max Wright got involved as well. He got a big hit in the left-hand side. How that car didn't spin, I don't know. But Apparently we that was... was the worst point ever for a camera shot. I was searching for a camera shot there. I just could not find one. But yeah, just one of those unfortunate racing incidents coming out of there where just everyone wants that, that line, don't they, off the left. And Mr. Ash Sutton is now in the lead of the race. So one lap down, five places gained, and off he goes. Headlights are blaze up the S's. I think we ought to find where that overtake was for the uh, for the lead. So Great shot. Love that shot out the final corner as they go over that final kerb. You can see all the headlights that look great as they come down the straight. But nice and textbook manoeuvre there from Ash. Late on the brakes, and through he goes. Important, you've got a good exit, so you shouldn't be too vulnerable down the straight. But anyway, let's get back to it. Just uh, at the end of the straight now, and uh, I lied clearly because <laughs> McNally trying to go around the outside. Will he keep the overlap? He has just about got no, he hasn't. So, <laughs> nearly it's close, so close, just needed it. And uh, yeah, but certainly he's one that will hear the call and he'll come across. And how many times have we seen where that's bit somebody hard, but mm. uh, yeah, not this time really looking great in this lighting because it's not quite completely dark as you say but it's enough for the lights to sort of light up the track and just make it look nice and uh, nice and shiny essentially and these liveries really do stand out on these cars as well it's fantastic to see that the lighting effects all work so well and I've noticed as well it's a bit better at dark in, uh, in the dark now so when it's properly night time the cars used to have a bit of a glow about them where they did sort of tend to glow in the dark a bit, and that's been massively reduced now, so cars actually look like they are at night. Not complete silhouettes, but it's uh, it's a lot more effective when it gets dark, so 
you do get that bit more immersion. And I know that endurance races going forward are going to be great. There's a lot of people that are very excited about the Daytona 24 hours, myself included. This just looks great now. I love the way the shadows are working perfectly as well. You know, off the, the lights, you know, the, the shadow being cast from the cars, things like that with all the lights in the background. It looks, yeah, definitely interesting. Uh, Billy Rose dropping down the order. He had an accident and had to jump back to the pits. That was why he was at the top. That's standing for for a little bit there. It doesn't always happen. The software usually picks that up, but every oh. now and again we get we get one. Uh, it's Carl Yakala oh, and uh, it. oh, the Jason. Oh, that went nicely for him. Oh, I wouldn't say he went nicely, but at least he didn't get collected by anyone else. He had a bit of a wobble there, and uh, Jackalet just sort of pushed him off and said, "Come on, just go have your accident over there, mate. There's a nice big runoff for you to go and spin off into, mate. Just you know, go over there." Nick Ritchie at the moment leading the uh, AM category. Taylor Lane is up there once again. We look at Nick McCarron right now. He's trying to overtake Taylor Lane. Brian Holmes just behind them as well. And it's XI against CQR once again for the lead. Ash Sutton and Jack Ashton side by side around the carousel this time. James McRitchie involved there as well. McRitchie's putting a great show in tonight. He's really quick for an AM driver as well. I wouldn't be too surprised to see him get classified as a pro quite soon, Alex. He's uh, yeah. been doing very, very well indeed. There are a couple of guys that you'd probably do the same. You'd probably say the same about Taylor as well. Not to drop him in it. I'm sure he'll be fuming at me for saying, no, no, don't take me down as a pro. I want to win the AM Championship. But just got to be honest, haven't you? It's, oh, Mick Ritchie and Hampton nearly making contact there. Making me hungry as well. I'd love a rich tea biscuit and then a Hampton sausage roll right now, but can't quite get that. Not at this yeah. time of night, anyway, in the UK. But Taylor Lane is going to be uh, watching this. But, whoa, he's really late on the brakes there. Mick Ritchie nearly put it into reverse as he goes into the right-hander. Got the overlap on the outside now, though. That's what he wants. Yeah, good all, job. All this off. It does look absolutely fantastic from uh, on board. The headlights just lighting up the track enough. It's not quite, like I say, it's not pitch black darkness, is it? So you can still see the circuit really, really well. No sort of FUD lights or anything like that. So, yeah. And there's enough lighting coming off of all of the headlights of the cars as well. So... That's a, it has a great lighting effect, that is. Really phenomenal. Yeah, it's very, very pretty indeed. There they go then, streaming down the straight. It's just a, it's just one big long train of MX-5s. Little, little dainty headlights, all the uh, all light in the way. Everyone just taking different... Well, Luke Cooper wins the award for widest line through there. Oh, never mind, someone in the background's just absolutely dominated that. We go flying up the S's once again. Again, Alex, we find ourselves halfway through a race after what feels like about three corners because it's just that exciting from the get-go. Yeah, I don't really know where these, these races are going to cut. They are very short and uh, this is actually a long circuit is Watkins, you know, the full classic version of it. So, mm. uh, well, the classic boot, should we say. Yeah, but yeah, they're, they're, like they're ticking those laps by really quickly. It's just the battle is, is epic at the front, but just wanted to give some other people a little bit of attention here because you know Nick McCarron, he's been having a good battle with uh, Luke Cooper, Holmes just in front of him, and Newman behind as well. So, oh, <laughs> I, I step away for a second and look, can, I'm here in contact, and uh, not sure who it was, but uh, definitely from the front group. <laughs> yeah, this. Uh bit of door banging in but this MX-5 has proved itself to be a very rugged car over the time that we've been watching it and these guys do chuck it about a lot and you can often see a bit of contact and it doesn't always end in incident it's just whenever we get that very famous quarter panel manoeuvre where you tap the rear end with uh, the front end of your car Mikel Garcia's just dropped down the order I heard a bit of contact then out of the toe section of the boot oh a bit of dicing under brakes there from those guys Taylor Lane having to go to the outside to avoid Brian Holmes but yeah I think Mikel Garcia has uh had an incident on his own further back there. I'm not sure whether he did get turned around, but he went down the order quite quickly. Oh, bit of contact with McCarron, and that looked like it broke something on that car then, Alex. That really veered out of the way, didn't it? Yeah, I think it, I think it was just more of a case of just trying to save it to uh, just perhaps upset the uh, the balance a little bit there. So, yeah, just a reaction, just to make sure that it doesn't get clobbered again to finish him off and, uh, you yeah, know, trying to save the car at the same time. You hear tyres squealing, chin noise everywhere, you know? I don't know what I was trying to say there, but yeah, you get the general idea. Tyre noise, lots of it, race cars. Yeah, there's the guy who just turned one then haul. Oh, oh no! no! It's Ashton! Ashton's around, he spins it around nice and quickly. Hopefully he doesn't get in too many people's way, but I don't know whether he did that on his own. 
he's, he doesn't want to keep his foot down too much on the grass, but that promotes Ash Sutton back into the lead. James McRitchie, probably my driver of the night tonight, is James. He's done a brilliant job. He is designated as an AM driver, but I'm not sure how accurate it is, once again saying that. But fantastic to see him putting in such a good performance tonight, and he's really wowed me. He goes past Ash Sutton then. He's going to be happy to hear that on the broadcast if he watches it back. Three wide for the lead then with Hampson and McNally. Oh, Hampson turns in. A little bit of contact. The car hops up in the air. I'm not sure what that's going to do damage-wise for it, but he might get away with it. But this is a really tasty scrap for the lead now. So many cars involved, and Adam McNally is to the fore. It's Taylor Lane nearly making contact around the outside there with Brian Holmes. Side by side now, McRitchie and McNally. Sutton watching from a very, very close uh, viewpoint. Right up the back of that Excite Energy Esports car. But look at this absolutely amazing battle. I think this is the top 15. It's all separated by two seconds. That is incredible. Absolutely yeah. brilliant. Look gap, at that. The largest gap in that group there is 0.35 of a second. <laughs> this is what this series is all about as well. It's absolutely awesome racing all the way through the field. Look at that. Oh, who's oh, slow on the inside? Oh. Taylor Lane, out of everyone that it could have been in that battle to disappoint me, Mr. Lane has had an issue. I'm not sure what's gone on. I think he might have just had a bad exit out there, you know. He don't really get slowdowns or anything around here because there's not mm. many corners to cut unless you're using the bus stop. There might have just been contact with McRitchie or Sutton there. I think they just got very close together. But look at everyone just looking for the optimum wine to try and just put off the car in front. And when it comes to been under lights like this Alex oh Jason Cooper got a bit out of shape then that could have caused a big incident but as I was going to say when there's lights involved like this when it's night time now surely that's even more of a distraction for when guys are trying to just pretend to put a move on you or do the good mm. old dummy where you put the nose down the inside exactly you're getting the, the, the glare and whatnot from the lights behind and yeah people are moving behind and yeah, you just think oh is he going for a move and it could be someone else yeah it just gives that extra little bit of uh sort of effect doesn't it to kind of throw you off so yeah quite possibly bit of a stressful environment for these guys and a stressful environment right now is the back bumper of Ash Sutton's MX-5 because Adam McNally's pretty much all over the back of it putting some of the white vinyl on there from their car onto the black vinyl of Ash's car in front of him as they come into the carousel and see Adam lifts a little bit just to make sure he's giving Ash the room because he doesn't want Ash to break and then pound him out of the way just chasing it nice and smoothly around there and I mean, to be fair, as, as a driver as well, I mean, not to sort of chuck... Oh, Adam, <laughs> nice little save there. You can just see how loosely these guys run it, but it must be quite an exciting prospect for these guys as well to obviously race against a British Touring Car champion, of course. I mean, it's just great for them all to share the track together, and it, it just shows the sort of the people that iRacing does sort of encourage to, to take part and, and who it attracts. It's brilliant to see. Well, exactly that. I mean, I don't know if you saw the video that Jimmy put up on his channel, of course. You know, he did that yeah. race with um, with Lando Norris, Verstappen, and, you know, they threw in some of the Red Line guys in there as well. You know, great race. He was all loving it, Jimmy was as well. It's like, you know, it's not very often you get to race with a couple of F1 drivers. So, yeah. Um, just, uh, I mean, you know, I'm really loving the fact that our hobby is really turning into, oh, that's going to affect him, we'll go back outside. Yeah. It's really turning into a, an e-sport now, and actually these guys uh, have, you know, the generation that's coming through to like F1 now, they've grown up using the simulators, getting involved, they understand the benefits of doing it, and more and more drivers will become, start coming through the sort of the sim ranks as well, just using it as the tool, you know. Sutton says it himself, it's, you know, it's his secret weapon that he has for the weekend, you know? He, he's got yeah. that much racecraft practice compared to the other people. They just don't get the same level. You know, he gets you know, four races a week, you know, in the BSR TC during the season, you know, and the race in there is every bit as crazy as this. So, you know, it just keeps him so, so on, you know, so sharp, so on the edge. And, uh, you know, that's why he says, you know, I I'm back next season, you know, he's, he's right up for it. And it's also quite interesting to think as well, of course he drove the MG6 a couple of uh, seasons ago, which was a front-wheel drive touring car. And you can imagine that with the Kia Optima on iRacing, maybe the power and the sort of weight distribution is slightly different, but at the end of the day it's a front-wheel drive saloon, so it's almost the perfect car for him to, uh, mm -hmm. to practice in, especially when it was the car that he tends to drive most as well. So. Yeah, yeah what, what he really wants is to get his Subaru in there, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely. Well, that okay. car's in our factor and it's a right handful. Yeah. Just 
fantastic to see these guys. You can see as well it's how dark, dark it's gone now. Yeah, yeah it's dark now. <laughs> so. It's great, absolutely great. But the lights doing their job, they are lighting up the track quite a bit. You wouldn't want to be, you know, if you're the leader, like if we jump on board with Sun, just get his view. So, and it's enough. I can make it out. I could, I'd be all right. So. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I, I, I'd say it, it's sufficient, isn't it? It's not really. Oh, who was that? On the grass. <laughs> it's Cooper, I think, was on the grass. Oh, this is uh, Luke feisty. Cooper, that is. Oh, oh no! no. Now yeah. he's on the grass. It wasn't the room. McCarran involved. Oh, oh no! Oh, dear. oh no! No! Oh, no! No! no. <laughs> oh, someone had to. Someone had to. I don't know who that was. I think it was one of the result uh, result cars that got there. I think it might have been David Ayres with the uh, the finishing blow there. Real shame, but I think that's probably the um, <laughs> that's probably the most time no has been said in a broadcast for a while. Ashley uh, Sutton leading the way then. Brian Holmes and McNally, though. Second and third for Excite. They're still going to be very excited about that. Oh, you can throw two, two puns. Two out, puns at once. Oh, oh, excited. No. Oh, what have you done? Oh, Mr. Bath will be pleased. Yeah. <laughs> where's, where, where's Paul when we need him? We'll love that too. Indeed. <laughs> nice bit of dicing going on between these boys then. And this is the battle for the, uh, the AM lead. Rick, Rick Ritchie and Taylor Lane's come right back into it. He's not actually, I apologise. McRitchie's at the back of this. Taylor Lane's in the background there. You can just see him on the right. But this is a great scrap between these guys. McRitchie's really been forced over there. And that's Josh Thompson. I haven't seen much from Josh in the last few months. Great to see those little reflectors on the MX-5 coming into uh, such good use as well, actually. It's, it's a part of the MX-5 I noticed a while ago. And it's nice to, uh, nice to see them glowing so bright. It looks great. But around the boot section, you can just see just how close these guys are all the time. Oh, McRitchie puts it in the wall. A lot of sparks. He's gone over to the other side of the track. He's on the grass again. That might lose him the and win here, actually, Alex. Taylor Lane is the next car down the road. Six tenths of a second, half a second behind. So we'll keep an eye on that. But the lead battle is hot enough. Brian Holmes is closing in. Two tenths of a second. Can he do anything in the final few corners? I reckon so. I reckon he's at least going to go for it. If Brian can get a win or anything, I want even the second place out tonight. I'm sure he'll be very, very pleased after speaking to him earlier on. He wasn't expecting much. He was asking uh, Jamie Ayres not to laugh at him when he lapped him. But that's Lane's not been the case tonight. Lane's through. He is indeed. And that's going to be, well, if he wins it, it's going to be his third and win of the evening. That's going to go down very, very well. Steve Hefford apparently off the track further down. He's ninth in class as well. But out the final corner. It's going to be your 2017 British Touring Car Champion. Oh, oh and he gives the wall a kiss for good measure. But Ash Sutton wins the fourth and final race of the evening ahead of Brian Holmes and Adam McNally for XI Energy Esports. They're going to be really happy with their results tonight. Pete Newman sneaks in a fourth place for CQR as well. Great result for him. There's cars on the grass. McRitchie still brings it home. Second in AM. But Taylor Lane takes his third AM category victory of the evening. Brilliant stuff from him. And he's another one, Alex, that I think, to be fair... We may see categorised as a pro very soon. James McRitchie, though, I have to say, really, he's my driver of the evening. He's been an absolute standout performer for me. He's kept it clean all along, really. Yeah, really good showing. And he, yeah, he's just got the results in, hasn't he? Rob Graham there, he got a uh, podium in the AM category for Auto McNock Hill. He'll be happy. But it's just been a, it's, it's a lovely showcase, this, for us to get four races all in different lighting conditions just to show how good they look. And I'm very, very pleased to have... Uh, to be part of this evening, it's always a good series to cover, and we have a uh, we have a really enjoyable time doing it, don't we? Each week, I think the racing just keeps getting better and better, and um, yeah, uh, great circuit today for it as well. So, not sure how they're going to improve on that on the on the next week, but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. Right, I'm just waiting for the final cars to come across so I can bring the official standings in. I think it's Max Wright again that we're waiting for, actually. Oh, <laughs> showing, Max. Showing 33rd overall at the moment. He's out on track somewhere. Here he is, chasing down Cesare Rizzo across the line. That car's not behaving itself. That must be damaged. <laughs> Just not getting there over the line is Max, but that will be the final race finish of the evening for them. He chucks it across the line. Obviously, in, oh, well, that's a <laughs> that was a much bigger incident than I was expecting it to be. But, um, yeah, out of dissatisfaction there, I think, by Max. He uh, won't be too happy with that result, but great to watch.
There are your results then. Ash Sutton wins the race, second win of the evening, with Brian Holmes a fantastic second place, Adam McNally third, Pete Newman in fourth with Craig Williams in fifth, Jason Cooper sixth, Josh Thompson seventh, Taylor Lane taking your his well his third and win of the evening, Ashley Beard ninth, Steve Heffer tenth, Michael Hall eleventh, Jamie Ayres twelfth, James McRitchie is thirteenth. Alex Cherney, sorry, 14th. Ellis Stevens, 15th. Jack Ashton, 16th. Rob Graham, 17th. And Lorne Murray is 18th. Anthony Ainsworth reminding us that donuts in VR don't feel too good right now, which you can, yeah, I can, I can relate to that. Being a, a major sufferer of motion sickness, I can definitely relate to that. But Lorne Murray then, finishing 18th for Auto Knock Hill. Nick McCarran, 19th. David Ayres, 20th. Carl Hardy, 21st. Alan McCain, 22nd. Carl Jackalat, 23rd. 24th is Scott Malcolm, 25th is Joe McDonald, Lee Barmer is 26th, McBarry is 27th, Tyler Luger Vickery 28th, and Ryan Walker 29th, Anthony Ainsworth, who we just mentioned then, is 30th, Mikel Garcia 31st, Cesare Rizzo and Max Wright were 32nd and 33rd as we saw them come across the line, and then everyone a lap down or more is Luke Cooper, Roy Viverke, Dave Hampson, unfortunately there in 36th, Charlie Summers, Jerome Urson, Billy Rose, Jack McIntyre, Pete Van Gogh, and Stuart McFadden. And that was, once again, Alex, four action-packed races, good rubbing and racing for, uh, by most of the guys, and a big incident, of course, to top off the uh, the third race. Yeah, loved it. Great night's worth of uh, racing. Um, bit of everything, you know. I think, what can you ask for? You know, we want to see uh, we want to see Rex, we want to see some drama, we want to see great racing. And, uh, yeah, got, I got it all tonight. And... Uh, yeah, looking forward to uh, to next week. I'm just actually quickly uh, trying to look at the schedule to see where we are next week. Because I can't remember off the top of my head. Help I me cannot out. either, I'm afraid. <laughs> Help me out in the chat, please, guys. Where are we next week? Well, actually, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll grab someone in. Um, who'd you fancy uh, first, uh, Chaz? And we'll ask them. Hopefully they know. We'll, we'll bring in Mr. McNally. Mr. McNally's had a very, very good... Uh productive evening a lot of good results adam welcome to the booth we've uh, we've seen a really good showing by your guys tonight actually you had a bit of a quiet start to the season last time out but surely you're happy after the results this evening yeah couldn't be more happy with the lads had some great races some great uh, performances and i mean that last race was unbelievable i had a few bad luck in race two and three but that last race for ash like said proper fun and they enjoyed it well that's one of the main things as well is that you obviously enjoy these races and was that the, uh, the sort of general consensus across the team? Did they all have a good night? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, pretty much. A few incidents here and there getting caught in stuff, but just what happens, especially with a big grid on a track like this. But the racing and all, I think, has been really good tonight. It's been some excellent battles. Yeah, we saw uh, a really good spread of talent tonight. And over 46 drivers, I believe. We, uh, I think we had 47 for the first one. Um, do, does the size of the grid tend to sort of alter your approach to how the evening goes, or...? When you're consistently at the front, does that uh, does not really make a, much of a difference? But really, just lap one, maybe it's lap two on the reverse grids, just because you know it's more likely to be some bigger crashes up ahead. But as we work uh, as a team, we will give each other a call, tell them if there's a crash up ahead, which helps a lot. So it's easy to slow down enough and avoid the wrecks. Yeah, I imagine the uh, the communication is key. Um, another thing we spoke about tonight is the fact that now, of course the lighting and the conditions change over the course of a race. And I understand, obviously, they are quite short races, but do you feel a difference in the car in terms of the temperatures changing over the course of a race, or is it all pretty much uh, just standard to you guys now? Uh, it's a bit like how it used to be, but I think with a lot less transition between sessions, so you're not losing as much grip from one session to another, or then gaining loads of grip in the last cold race. So it's a bit more balanced and with the updates I've done to the car as well, just makes the racing great. Well, we've uh, certainly seen that the results are coming good for you because of that as well. Um, are you are you guys putting in a massive amount of work between races, or is it sort of just practice and uh, just turn up and get on with it? Right. To be honest with you, with being like a new team and having Excite on board, we're pretty much jumping in a few different leagues, trying to get the cars out there, let people see where we're at, and get people to follow our Facebook page, Excite racing uh, excite energy i racing on facebook just like people to jump in and help us grow well we hope it does the livery certainly looks good as well we all know i'm a i'm a fan of a nice livery but 
Yeah, it's been it's been good to see you guys get some results tonight, mate. But uh, before we let you go, is there anyone you want to give a, a quick shout out to? Yeah, uh, Excite Energy for jumping on board with us this season. Uh, you can find them at imxcite.com. Well, the regulars like Jess at the Racing Men or Tom's Vehicle Detailing, Prio Premature Baby Foundation, and we've got uh, a new sponsor on who is Rear Stator Systems as well. They've just joined us, so. Got a good strong team, and we've also got Motorsport Days Live, who hosts a two-day event in November for drivers to meet sponsors and new teams before the season starts. And it's held at Silverson, so we're getting there, building the team up. Cracking stuff. Well, good to speak to you as always, Adam, and uh, we wish you and the uh, the rest of the Excite guys the best for next week. Right, hey, thank you very much. Cheers, buddy. Adam McNally, there, my favourite Scotsman. Really, uh, always good to speak to him. It's a very, very good, honest team as well, Excite. They were Youth Energy previously, but um, they put they do put a lot of work in, to be honest, with uh, what they do, and they certainly do promote the brand, which is nice. Um, Alex, who do you want to pick for yours? Let's uh, see who you have to, have to chat with. I'll bring in Josh, have a little word with him. How you doing, buddy? How about me? <laughs> so, um, some good and some bad tonight, but, you know, how did you... Well, I say that from my point of view, but how did you find it? <laughs> Mixed bag, like you literally just said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it like it was. We- it's a weird night, to be honest. Obviously, I decided to race this with an hour to go, and I thought it was the one we raced last time. So you go through the cut through and do the short lap. So that caught me out by surprise when I got to qualifying. Um, but no, overall, I'm quite happy. I managed to recover quite nicely in race two, um, and the final race as well, going from pretty much dead last to sixth in that chaos of a race and. Race four. So, yeah, they're the good parts. Obviously, the bad part is having that DNF, which is not what I needed after last week, getting that DQ. It's just put me even further on a back foot now. So, got a lot of work to do. I mean, um, just to sort of touch on the, the conditions like Chaz mentioned there, I mean, uh, that last race, you know, the night come in quite quickly and things like that there. I mean, what's the... What's that like racing in, in those sort of variable conditions? I mean, you started off, it wasn't too bad, but it got pretty dark at the end. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's actually quite good because you can actually feel half time to go So, the place I know it's at was going to the carousel towards the end of the race. That was like the place I'd make most of my time up. So, you have to like drive it different with the condition, how it changes. So, obviously, start the race a little bit more, you've got to be a little bit more careful. By the end of the race, it's just like driving in with really cold weathers. What you're testing, so you can you find so much time on like corner entry speed on the brakes. So yeah, it spiced the race up a bit because obviously there's some people not used to it, some people who are. So yeah, adds up quite a bit. The um, the chats kindly let me know that we are actually at um, Spa next week. So how are you uh, how are you going to look for that? I mean, if we thought this was a draft track, well, that's just on another level. <laughs> yeah, I think Spa we a lot better than here because obviously it's a bit of a there's more of a driver's aspect to it as well obviously the draft will make will have a key part especially in the first part of the lap and the up through um launching on but i feel like the infield part of the lap i think the driver side will help that bit so you have a bit of mixture so hopefully it should balance out and produce good race like we had in race four because that was insane cool any final thoughts from yourself and shout outs yeah, I'd like to say thanks to everyone at CQR because obviously I ran them first round but didn't actually have it in the team sheet which is a bit annoying. Uh, obviously, thank you to all those guys and obviously everyone at Frost Master Nirvana for just the support for watching the stream. So Thanks, mate. Well, thank um, yeah, enjoy yourself and uh, we'll catch you next week if not sooner. Probably sooner. <laughs> yeah. Actually, yes. Cheers. Who do you fancy now? Oh, we'll, uh, we'll bring in that, Mr. Lane. We'll I was about him. to say, that was a trick question, really, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. But uh, we'll get you in next time. But uh, here we go. There we go. Mr. Taylor Lane joins us in the booth. Taylor, fantastic night for you. And, uh, of course, representing Beast Racing, which I'm, of course, very happy about. You've got three AM wins on, uh, on the belt today. How do you feel about that? So 
off. Well, um, obviously, a bit of a transition to what you're used to, I think, isn't it? The MX-5. Have you, have you found it an easy car to sort of adapt to? Um, I've actually raced this. In the, the, I've actually raced this car in the past, but um, I didn't find it too difficult. But I wasn't getting to grips with it too well. The past um, updates seem to have made it feel a lot better. I can push the car a lot harder now. And do you feel that that's something that you can develop on even further with setups over the coming season? There is a potential for pushing it even further with the setups. Well, hopefully, that means that the uh, the results will continue for you as well. I'll obviously be very happy about it as well, of course. Keep um, those cards close to your chest there, don't you, mate? I don't yeah. know. There's a potential. Just don't tell them what you're adjusting. <laughs> This is the eSports network, Ron, not just Apex as well, so more people will listen. But, um, yeah, obviously it's been great to watch from my point of view as well, but, I mean, the whole the whole series has been great for providing close racing. I mean, is, is it um, is it sort of worlds apart from stuff you've been in before? I mean, I know you used to do a bit of endurance stuff, didn't you, um, before now? So, I mean, obviously people there are a bit more tame. Is this a bit more sort of like uh, 50 crazed lions being let out of a cage? Pretty much. This is like... No bars, no bars held racing. <laughs> You've got to go like, balls to the wall all the time. If you don't, you're going to get shafted at one or something. <laughs> For lack of a better phrase, eh? But yeah, I know, I know completely what you mean. It is uh, a bit of a manic series, but it provides good racing and, it, and it's good to watch from us lot as well. Um, before we let you go, the table, and is there anyone you want to uh, put a quick shout out to? Yes, I'm not going to mess this one up though. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'd like to obviously give a shout out to Beast Racing, um, mine has his team. Um, I'd also like to give a shout out to Racebook TV, our affiliate, and obviously the Racing Esports Network, providing great coverage across all forms of racing and our racing. And I'd also like to give a shout out to Prestige Worldwide, yes, it's named after the company, Film Step Budgets, um, Destinations, and Busy Rob Lawn Care. Cracking stuff. Uh, well, good to speak to you as always, Taylor, and I'm sure I'll speak to you very, very soon. But uh, well done on your results tonight, and we'll uh, hope to speak to you next time. Right. Well. Well, what an yeah. evening. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Good feisty one, as always, from the BSR MX5 Winter Series. Of course, all four series that they've held so far in terms of the uh, different seasons have been absolutely brilliant to watch. Uh, Alex, it's been a pleasure as well to work with you as always. It's been great to broadcast for you on the iRacing Esports Network. And like you say, next time we're out at Spa, so with these guys racing around there at night, it's bound to be even better, isn't it? Oh, it will be. That'll be great. Um, that'll be very dark going up um, the Kemmel Strait, I think, towards the, uh, towards the end of the final and fourth race next week so yeah that'll be yeah, that'll be good Look forward to that that's bound to be a lot of fun and we hope that you join us for that one same time next week on the iRacing Esports Network I've been Chaz Draycott alongside Alex Simpson thanks very much for your company tonight have a fantastic evening presentation of the iRacing Esports Network.